The Diamonds are in the desert. Chase Field, Phoenix, Arizona. It's the 20th perfect game All-American Classic with thunder in those bats and lightning in the arms. It's a preview of the 2023 draft. Oh my, the future of this game is in very, very good hands. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you for sure, baby. Let's go. Let's get it. Baseball's greatest amateur event moves to the desert. Chase Field, Phoenix, Arizona. It's been 20. What a celebration. 20 editions of Perfect Games All-American Classic. As we roll it out today, roof is closed. Of course, it's the desert. It's hot. And the explosive offense has been a blast to watch to this point. Yes, the future of the game is bright. Oh, my goodness. When he played, he was that way. This is Hunter Pence, longtime major leaguer, world champion, and an all-star. Now a great voice of the amateur game. This is David Ronsley. This is a man who for three decades has scouted the game of baseball, Perfect Games, vice president of player personnel, and I'm Darren Sutton. Thanks for hanging out with us. David, you've seen the history of this game. You've seen it grow. You've seen players that have come to life from high school onto the major leagues. Give us some perspective of the history of this game? Well, in 20 years, we've had two, what, 252 All-Americans uh, play in this game. I follow box scores every day, and it's a thrill every time I see a new player, uh, a PGA All-American that I saw in this game make his big leg debut. I think we've had like 30 in the last year, and it's just going to steamroll from here. It, it's a great thing to see these young men achieve their dreams in the future. Bryce Harper, Gavin Lux of the Dodgers, Garrett Cole, he's that Cy Young Award winner. Hunter, these are all guys that have come through this, this event and played at your level. It's incredible the energy that this creates. Absolutely. It's so exciting, this game the greatest talent, the All-Americans of high school throughout the, our country and, and some of the other countries yeah. as well. We have a player from Japan, but they are getting better and better, and they're so fun to watch. And it's going to be exciting because you get to see them here, and you'll see them getting drafted when it comes draft day. You'll see them in your organizations as well. All right, let's ping pong some players back forward. David, you go first. Dylan Head, a pure bat when he steps in the box out of the greatest Chicago land. Yeah, well, Dylan, Dylan Head is one of the best athletes in this class. He's got 6'2 speed and 60. He's got fast hands, he's a quick twitch athlete, but strong. And I kind of like him to a, a young Michael Harris, the phenom for the Atlanta Braves. There's a lot of tool similarities right there. Hunter Pence, the number one player in the land is Maxwell Clark. Yeah, Maxwell Clark, he's got big thighs. He's, uh, he's 6'1", 190, he's a running back as well, but this guy won the five tool athlete of the year. He can do it all, he has power, he has speed, and he has energy. He's exciting to watch, and I'm looking forward to seeing him tonight. And finally, Big D, I know it says first baseman outfielder at the end of Noble Meyer. <laughs> he's all right-handed pitcher. He blew your mind at the National Showcase. Yeah, yeah. D uh, Darren, you, you like to remind people how long I've been scouting, unfortunately. Long time. Long time. And that performance at the National Showcase ranks with the best I've ever seen. We're talking Jose Fernandez and, and Beckett and Casimir, the best pitchers I've seen at 17-year-olds. He was 95, 98, mid 80 slider. It was thrown to spots. He threw a 90-mile-an-hour changeup. High schoolers should not be allowed to throw 90-mile-an-hour changeups. But he is a, a, a generational talent, potentially, and it's going to be great to watch him pitch here tonight. All right. We're going to have all sorts of fun introducing you to these athletes. The home run derby was a blast as well. Daniel Cuve and Ralphie Vasquez went back and forth east and west. They had like a couple of overtimes before they settled it. But the man who I enjoy watching catch and hit bombs, Javi Vasquez, he won it. Hunter and I and David and Danny Wexelman when we come back with the perfect game All-American Classic. Here we go. The 2022 Perfect Game All-American Classic is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. New Balance, proud partner of the Perfect Game All-American Classic. PG Tech, turn your showcase results into next level exit velo. Yeti, built for the wild and perfect game. The world's largest and most respected independent scouting service in baseball and by Launch Hydrate. Chase Field, Darren Sutton, glad to have you with us. Danny Wexelman, the voice of amateur baseball from New York City. 
to Omaha, Nebraska at the College World Series is down on the diamond. She's standing by with Trey Phelps and Ralphie Vasquez. Danny, take it away. Yeah, that's right. I got Trey Phelps from the east, Ralphie Velasquez from the west. Ralphie, the home run derby champion. What were the keys to success today? The keys to success were taking my time, having an approach of putting it inside the pool at the Dimeback Stadium. And you also made a tweak to your swing in May. Walk us through some of those changes. So basically, when I was wide, I couldn't really, I, it worked for a long time, but I started having trouble seeing the ball. So I changed it. I'm going to be completely honest. I treat it like wiffle ball. I literally changed my swing like I do in wiffle ball. And it's been working very, very well. Congratulations on the win. Trey, I turn to you with the very large baseball hat. The energy is 11 out of 10 always. How excited are you for this game? Um, well, first of all, I'm not being cocky at all. The energy is definitely a 20 out of 10. Um, and it's just fun being here, having the, just having the chance to be on the baseball field with these players in a big league. It's only, it's never promised, and I feel like I just want to make the best out of every opportunity I get. We know you're going to wear that in the game. We might see that, but why is the East going to go back to back in the All American Classic? Um, one, we're just too good. Um, Georgia, Florida. I mean, that's the hotbed of all. Two, um, I'm leading this team, man. I'm gonna put them on my back, and we're gonna see how this go. We may let them score. We may let them get a hit, but. Like I said, East on top, West K. Boys, thank you so much. Darren, back to you. Yeah, good stuff, Danny Wexelman, a talented man on the mound. Left-hander Cam Johnson. Johnson dealing with this starting lineup. Brock Chalowski's a local. He's from Arizona. Number one player of the land. Hunter already talked about him. Big swing in McGonigal. Will Gasparino's out of L.A. It's Blake Mitchell, the catcher. Eric Batanti, a Californian. It's Grohovac. It's Velasquez. It's Andrew Wiggins out of Indiana. Then two players you don't see will meet Roman Martin, who will hit 10th and the talented Dylan Head, the left fielder. And on the mound, Cam Johnson out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland, now is down in Florida at IMG Academy. He's an LSU commit. This is a talented athlete. David, the number 28 player in the land. What will we see? Well, Cam Johnson's a big young man, 6'5", 230. He gets his power from his lower half and his delivery, and a ton of power it is. He's been up to 97 at PG events, was 93-95 at the at PG National a couple weeks ago. But he also throws a high spin curveball and a changeup. So he's a, a three-pitch guy. Be fun to see what he brings at the start of this All-American Classic. He's the son of Steve and Tasha, and he's the big brother to Carter. I'm sure they're all thrilled to watch him open this game on the mound as he faces Rock Chalowski to start things. A local product out of Hamilton High School. Rock is a UCLA commit. Hamilton, a powerhouse, all sports out here in the Valley. Chandler, Arizona, that's about 15 minutes from this ballpark. The perfect game, All-American Classic is underway with a heavy diving fastball. That's strike one. Chalowski's got a, a baseball background. His father, Dan, is a scout with the uh, Cincinnati Reds and was a first-round draft choice out of Cal Berkeley many, many years ago. Skips it into the dirt. How did you shake the butterflies, Hunter, at moments like these? Because they've all got to have them. Yeah, you don't really shake the butterflies. You let them fly, you know. Uh, you feel into them, and you go out there and, and trust. Uh, if you don't care, you don't get butterflies. So it means you care. I loved them. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great perspective. Young athletes, you hear that? That's Hunter Pence. David, we're seeing a lot of movement right away, and you described it from this left-hander. It's got kind of like that Scott Schoenweiss, for those who remember, that heavy sink from the left side. Nice job going the other way. It's down off the end of the bat, charging in, putting that one away. There's a little bit of sunlight out there that Alfonso and Rosario had to deal with, but he made the play for the out. Yeah, the roof roof closed here. You still got to have the shades on because I'm sure you know the future is bright. But you do have to deal with you don't have to deal with much in high school is the lights when you're running in from the corner outfields, especially on those low line drives. So I can see, you know, you can see the glare right there. I can see why you'd want some shades on out there. Maxwell Clark gets the call. He is very famous at this age group. Best way I know to say it. Clark is out of Indiana. He is at Franklin County High School, where, as Hunter said in the open, he's a talented football player. Got here late behind the group because he had to play Friday night. And play very well he did. What, four catches for 100 and some yards, and they beat the defending state champions. 2-0 the count as the breaking ball misses in there. Angela is mom, Ron is dad, and this is a young man. Amongst his peers is very well known. When you go visit him on Instagram, he's got nearly 200,000 followers. That's good for baseball. In my mind, that's just good for baseball. Yeah, this is an exciting kid to watch play, and he's got all the tools, all the electricity. 
and the eye black to boot. <laughs> right here, you can see, gets a nice heater right there and just beats him. Right down the middle at 95 miles an hour. I've got to believe that Clark was looking for a different pitch on that because 95, yeah, that's big, but Maxwell Clark can handle 95. I think he was looking breaking ball right there. Over the outside corner, he got a, a good cut look to that pitch. That almost looked like a cutter. Had the movement of a slider, but it was far too firm to be that, Hunter. Yeah, and Cam Johnson, this angle has got to be tough on the lefties and just paints it. He shaved some rubber off the balloon of the outside corner. Uh, I mean, not much you can do with that lefty on lefty. And he just came at him with fastballs, David. Yeah, and, and he threw a breaking ball the first hitter, but there aren't any signs of the butterflies here. You know, I'm sure his heart beats up, but he's got it together and and, uh, you know, seven pitches, two outs. And we've seen the cut, the f cut on the fastball. We've seen the dive on the fastball. We've seen the straight fastball at 95. So so he's got his game going right now. Meet Kevin McGonigal. He's out of Monsignor Bonner High School in Alden, Pennsylvania. McGonigal is one that you have seen, David, for several years as what you scouts call just a pure bat. Oh, I, I think he's the best pure hit tool. In, in this draft class, you can see there 427 in his, his perfect game career, but he barrels everything. Didn't quite get the barrel on that one, though. And he'll be out number three in a great first inning from Cam Johnson. Yeah, racing to the bag, making that play. Daniel Cuvet, Cam Johnson. We know your name now, sir. Let's take a look at the East starting lineup of the All-American Classic. A veteran of travel ball, if it's possible. Drew Burris has really earned his way here years and years. On down, Florida State commit Arjun Namala. Really excited to see him at this level. Raiden Holcomb looks like he could play football in the NFL. He's that big and strong. A great developing athlete. And down the family tree of Jackie Robinson, Antonio Anderson, Chicagoland catcher Zion Rose, and George Lombard, that major league name, that's his son, George Lombard, and Alfonso Rosario, two you don't see on that graphic. And we meet Noble Meyer. He comes out of West Lynn, Oregon. He is at Jesuit Portland. He's a University of Oregon commit. He is the son of Erica and Mike. And this is a man that David Ronsley, sitting to my right, texted me. Have we shut down our production of Perfect Games National Showcase because I just saw one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. Yes, and, and, and as we said in the pre, I said in the pregame show, this is this is a special arm. And, um, you know, I hope he brings it tonight the same way he did at PG National because it will be easy to see. And, and the thing is, 17 years old still, there's so much talent. Interestingly, he went to the same high school as Mick Abel, who was a PG All-American and a first rounder two years ago. So a lot of great baseball being played in Oregon right now. An easy 95 off his fingertips to the man out of Perry, Georgia, and Drew Burris. Georgia Tech commit. Goes right back out there and gets a call of a strike. He is a five-star national man because his dad helped build that program. His dad, Andy, his mom is Dana. And this is a 4.0 student in the classroom. Goes the other way with the breaking ball. Played nicely from the outfield grass. On to second in time for the out. That is Kevin McGonigal out there at second base. One away. And man, did Burris get down the line. That was absolutely fine. You can see why he's got the lightning bolt spikes. But popping the chain a little bit. But he can scoot, huh, David? Yeah, and, and Diamondbacks people are used to with Alec Thomas here. Corbin Carroll about to make his big league debut. Burris is that same type of quick twitch strong player. Walker Jenkins gets the call now of Oak Island, North Carolina, and he takes a pitch that misses at 96 miles an hour. North Carolina Chapel Hill is his commitment. And his travel team, the South Charlotte Panthers, the number five player in the land. In your mind, David, how has he earned that ranking? What skills? He's a hitter, and, and he hasn't had the year this or this summer that he had hoped for. He's had some injuries. He really appeared healthy. You know, over the last three days, which 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 thrilled us. We missed, by the way, the 89 mile an hour changeup <laughs> right there. Um, but yeah, he really showed his his swing and his power. He had a hamate injury, which you know, the first thing a hamate does is going to sap your power for a while. And but it didn't seem to sap it at all based on the last three days. High fly ball, left center field. There's some tracking going on out there. Maxwell Clark, and behind him making the play is Dylan Head. 
He hit that ball the other way to the track in the alley, Hunter. Yeah, this, this was, uh, you know, he got a good poke on it, but Dylan Head, like you talked about, this athleticism right here, this might have been the center. The center fielder, Maxwell, is playing super shallow, and Dylan just <laughs> catches this in center. He's like, hey, man, you got to back up a little bit. This guy's big. Yeah, and, and the thing is, all these kids play against each other. They all know each other, and for Clark to be playing that shallow with, with Walker Jenkins up it is a statement almost. It's like, yeah, try to hit it over my head. Well, he did. <laughs> but you had a fa faster guy <laughs> in left field. Aiden Miller gets the call now. Last night's winner, he earned the Jackie Robinson Player of the Year Award. He's an Arkansas commit. He's ranked fourth in the land, and David can play just about anywhere on the diamond and play it well. Yeah, and the thing that gets me about Miller, he's listed at 6'2", 215, which is a big young man. But he's one of these athletes that you can see him even at that size playing in the middle infield. So well proportioned. It's strong, but it's not bulky at all. And uh, he's a guy you can see, you know, playing shortstop. And, and what a great young man as well. Loves the fact that he could play anywhere on the field. It's an interesting cap there. Trey got another hat. He's the hat guy. <laughs> the one, two. Fouls off a slider. Well, when you when you think about the work on the mound of Noble Meyer and how he shocked everyone, this is a man that looks back to his freshman year. He said it was a challenge. I was skinny. I wasn't strong. COVID hit. But I went to work when COVID hit. At home, I put on 40 pounds and 8 miles an hour in about a half year. He just went to work when everyone went home. Just a breaking ball bounces in there. And Hunter, places like California and Oregon, there weren't really many opportunities to get out, so he figured, I'll stay home and work as hard as I can. He's now pitching in this game. Yeah, and sink or swim in that time, take advantage. What do you do when no one's watching? Well, apparently Noble Meyer went to work, and it's it's paying off for him. Noble fires a fastball that misses just off the plate, touching 94, 95 miles an hour. And Aiden Miller is putting together an impressive at bat. The slider foul ball, he was right on. And, and Noble, you saw him kind of like, where do I go from here? I guess I'll give him the fastball away. Tied him up. That one rolls up the line. They wait, they wait, they wait. It still rolls up the line. Don't let it hit that bag, gentlemen. Don't oh, let it hit that yeah, bag. Yeah, you want to run, Aiden. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't give him that shot. But. I've seen it. I've seen them come back, and that almost did. I think it happened in the big leagues last week, as a matter of fact. It just nicked the corner of the bag like that. Yeah, it looked like he was giving the. the oh, uh, I mean, gracious. that is a cat hair away. You're right, because he didn't run. If that ticks the bag, pick it no, up, step on it. You're exactly right. 3 2. Breaking ball, good take. And that's one heck of an at bat by Aiden Miller. He wasn't fooled at all. Danny Wexelman, take it away. All right, I have Arjun Namala. Arjun, a dream to be here. What's the atmosphere like? Oh, it feels great. You know, I've been dreaming to be here for my whole life almost. And, you know, I got chills going down my spine right now. You know? You're facing Noble Meyer. What's the approach? Oh, man, he's a flamethrower. And, you know, I just got to get the foot down early, get my hands back, you know, trust my hands. Have fun. Thank you. Darren. That's incredible. Interview before you go up to bat. That, that's impressive. I don't think I could have done that. That new school versus old school. The young <laughs> kids have cameras everywhere. You know, the camera phone wasn't invented till I was in the big leagues. <laughs> and if there's anybody in this class that can trust his hands and, and do more with it, it's probably Namala because he has the fastest hands in this class. They're just lightning. I've heard a lot of uh, um, Soriano, Alfonso Soriano comps, you know, because it's a kind of a, a whip. You know, a, a slender, thin body, but the hands are so fast. At a Strawberry Crest High School in Valrico, Florida. He's a Florida State commit, and he drives that one towards center field, tracking it over his shoulder, landing right there at the waist is a talented Clark. Maxwell on the beat with this one. And a strong inning for the man out of Oregon, Noble Meyer. Big league experience, certainly the Oregon is a cranking. Dee Baxter is in the ballpark, the great mascot of these Arizona Diamondbacks. Charlie Soto gets the call out of Kissimmee, Florida. He was the Baseball America Pitcher of the Year, as named last night. And this is a very talented athlete. He's a Central Florida commit, reborn Christian Academy. 
He's moved his way all the way up to the 11th ranking in the country. He's the son of Wanda and Carlos, and he is the sibling of Carlos and Ashley. This is Charlie Soto. And this is a great story. Charlie Soto is still 16 years old. He's one of one of three 16-year-olds in this game. But two years ago, he was a 6-foot, 165-pound shortstop. And now he's a 6'5", 195-pound right-hander who's been up to 98. Um, his body has completely changed, and he's still young enough to project. But, um, yeah, his ascendancy from just being a, a shortstop to being an All-American pitcher has just been, been a great story to follow. He's dealing with a very tall, athletic outfielder by the name of Will Gasparino out of Los Angeles, California. Will's a Texas commit. That one hits the outside corner at 95, and he is six foot six inches tall. Dad is Billy. He runs all the scouting for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Mom is Jenna. He's huge, Hunter. He's huge. Yeah, and he's got a quiet approach here as well. And you always wonder with the big bodies, like having the body control, especially at that age. But Charlie Soto is throwing some heavy heat right there, and he's just staying quiet. Looks nice. Xander Muth. Out there getting stretched out. We'll see him in just a bit. This is a young athlete as Charlie Soto, and you look at what he's done in his PG career. Look at the strikeouts, the top fastball velo. As he rolls that one foul. That's twice those hands have gotten there quickly. He was a big time soccer player when he was young, so maybe that helped with the athleticism. Certainly played a lot of basketball and football. For a dad who worked in baseball, he had a dad that encouraged him to play every sport. You got to love that. Just, you know, give them a chance to do a little bit of everything and find what they love. And it looks like he knows what he's doing with the stick. One and two, the count. He's at Harvard Westlake, a great program in Los Angeles. That one dives down and in. That's a changeup. Yeah, and that's Soto's second best pitch. Um, in fact, I was talking to his coach at the hotel yesterday, and we, we talked about what, what can Soto do to take the next step. And I said, it's all about the breaking ball, really. The changeup's an outstanding second pitch with big dive. The, the, he doesn't have the confidence in the slider yet. It's definitely a third pitch. Up toward that close, Drew. Soto gets out of the way. Pretty good communication, and the play is made. Racing in is Aiden Miller, the third baseman. Aiden can play anywhere on the diamond. In this case, he was playing third, Hunter. Yeah, and, and he came a long way for this. Stays with it right there with a, a, another body in his face, which is really tough. And pretty nice play. Good at bat for Aiden Miller, and now showing he can he can manage a little chaos right there. <laughs> Blake Mitchell is a gifted athlete as well. As a matter of fact, Mitchell and Miller in different ways are mentioned in sentences a lot. One a talented left-handed hitter. One a talented right-handed hitter. This is Blake Mitchell out of Sinton, Texas. And he's committed to go to LSU. Jay Johnson, the head coach there. Yeah, Mitchell's just, in fact, he, he's the number one ranked catcher in the class, but he doesn't play catcher in high school. They have a young man who's committed to University of Texas. He plays shortstop and also pitches. Hits it hard out to second base, but it levels off nicely for Antonio Anderson, and that is out number two in the inning. And, and I want to circle back to Charlie Soto working on more pitches. He has a .40 ERA, and he's like, I got to mix in a breaking ball, the fastball and changeup. But you got to love that about these kids. It's never enough, and and that growth mindset. But man, it looks really good coming out of his hand. That's for sure. Yeah, I will asterisk it by saying he was talking about move up in the draft, and, the, oh, and his okay. coach asked me, "Where do you have him?" I said probably in the 20 to 30 range in the first round. So we're talking about small incremental steps there. Two 16 year olds are facing one another right now. How exciting is this for our game? This is Eric Batanti. And like Gasparino, he looks like he could be a college basketball small forward. He stands 6'5", and yet David, he is committed to sticking in the middle of the infield. Yeah, and I, if, if there's a 6'5 athlete who can do it, it might be Batante. Um, are you worry at 16 that he might still have some growth potential left? Look at that face. He's not shaven yet. Line drive the other way. Tough play for Miller. Had it out front. That one got on him. And it got on him very quickly. That was a funky swing, too. Yeah, he put a little English on this one, and pretty turbo sink. A lot of movement off of that. Catches it off the end and uh, shoots it the other way, and it just gets a short hop on. Aiden Miller, but that's a nice, nice swing. That ball, man, Soto's got some movement on it. It's not a flat 96. No, that was that was 97, and it dove hard. There. That was a cue ball over to Aiden.
It's Gavin Grohovec now out of Orange, California. He's at Villa Park High School where he plays for Burt Call. A lot of people know who he is out in the OC. And he's a Texas A&M commit. And we've been talking about the physicality of some of these players. And Grohovec's listed 6'2", 215. I think it's probably closer to 6'4". But look at that physique there. He's got muscles on muscles. One of the strongest players in this All-American game. There's a little slider, I think. And I'll say it's getting the kids are getting so talented and obviously this is the best. This is the All-American Classic, the perfect game All-American Classic, but they're so talented. It's it's similar body movements to a lot of big league players. Well, they play a lot, Hunter, and they they end up if they're fortunate enough to make it to travel events, they play against one another, meaning you know, you're playing on a travel team where you're seeing velocity, you're learning at 17 how to handle velocity. And you don't have that deer in the headlights look. And although this is a pretty incredible situation, very few of them, some of them got invited to the All-Star Game to play at the event out at Dodger Stadium. Certainly you were around for that weekend as well. Not all of them, and some of them may wear a USA jersey later on in the fall, but they still handled all of it pretty well. Yes, indeed. They, they, they don't look like they're surprised or deer in headlights. They have poise. And Gavin took himself out on the lower half. That one tied him up. There's more of that movement that's tough to deal with as a hitter. <laughs> yeah. And let's take a look at this shin. Where did he catch his back toe? Back ankle? That's, the, the ball is really moving and fooling you if you foul it off your back ankle. That's tough to do. It doesn't feel good, though. Starts to walk it off as he gets comfortable. I'll remind Hunter he'll like this news. This is a Southern California guy whose favorite team, Gavin Grohovic, is the Giants. He's a major Giants fan. Respect. <laughs> but he loves watching Mike Trout play. I think there's a lot of young men down there who love watching Mike Trout play. It's a very common answer. Breaking ball. My goodness. 84 miles an hour, and it looked like it was dropped down an elevator shaft. Charlie Soto, as you go, we go. And there he goes. Friday night, it was an exhibition on the mound, Barrett Kent, David. Well, Bear Kent really came out and, and surprised us almost. He was 94 to 96, and this is not one of the pitchers who didn't make the final 18 pitchers. To have a guy coming out 94, 96 and just blowing like Bear Kent did, that was outstanding performance by the young man. Cal Randall's out of Discovery Bay, California. This is a NorCal pitcher who's got a really loose, fast arm. There's, a, there's some mechanical issues that he's gonna clean up, but he's a very good athlete. And 90 to 95, spins the ball really well. When he gets the ability to repeat, he's going to take another big step forward. Ethan McIlvain is out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. Well, Ethan McIlvain is one of the more polished pitchers here. He's a strike thrower. Uh, topped out at 95, most, works mostly 90, 93. But it's very smooth, very repeatable. I think he dropped a nice change up right there. But he's a guy who's going to be successful right away at the next level. Itsuki Takemoto from Wakayama, Japan. He struck out all six. Oh, what a great story. Uh, he passed up a chance to be on the Japanese 18 under national team to come here because he wants to go to school in the United States and take the United States route up to 91 through a cutter, a slider, a different slider, a curveball, a changeup, and he retired, struck out some very good left-handed hitters with that cutter. And now a chance to Watch some flames on the mound. This is Travis Sikora, the right-handed pitcher out of Round Rock, Texas. He is a Texas commit. He's at Round Rock High School as well. John uh, Carter is his high school coach. Who is he? Because it looks like a lot of heat. Hunter, do you have your seatbelt on? I got my seatbelt okay. on. All right. He's got the red glove on, so. There's a lot of presence on this mound as he fires the first fastball at 99 miles an hour. He's been, he's, he's, hit, he's been hitting 100 regularly this summer. You'll see it. Power on power. This is Braden Holcomb. He's dealing with him. It's a slider, and it's one and one. Holcomb is a young man out of Florida. Played at Perfect Games 14U Select Festival. Braden is a Vanderbilt commit. And th that, that was probably the best slider I've ever seen Sakura throw. And you're geared there for 99, and he drops a 84 slider with a little depth. Same arm slot it looked like. 
Keep that's 100 true. on timeout. <laughs> Aren't you, aren't you supposed to let up on timeout? It looked like he was like, oh, he's not here. I'm just going to let it eat. <laughs> he's got the pitching face on. He's coming. To the other side, base hit. Holcomb off the end of the bat. Picked on a slider at 87 miles an hour. And the son of Lynn and Jason, Mr. Holcomb, picks up a base hit. And right here, that's our, our first hit first of the ball game. Doesn't try to do too much. Another slider and not fooled this time. What a beautiful bat path. Yeah, and that's just really what you have to do there with that pitch is, you know, take it backside and very mature job of hitting. Now, when you talk about Sakura and you get to know him a little bit deeper, his mom is Jen, dad is Frank. His dad was a college pole vaulter, so a really unique athlete in college at North Texas as that breaking ball misses inside. Well, Sakura until really this summer, what was always listed himself as a primary shortstop because he loves to play. He's just got too good on the mound, and so it's like, no, Travis, you're, you're a pitcher now. You know, you're still a great athlete. You've got hit. power, but you know, you're a pitcher now. Daniel Covey, we've been watching him for years. He is a Miami commit out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Covey was a finalist in the home run challenge earlier today. We also watched him at Perfect Games 14 New Select Festival. A couple of years back, and he digs in, loving this game and loving the Red Sox as they try to pick Holcomb off. Cuve may have may be the most impressive hitter over the last three days. He's just dominated every batting practice, you know, home run derby too. But he's just so in, you know, in now. He was the same way at National, put on a show in batting practice there. Um, he's had a great summer, hitting close to 400. We'll see how it plays against a 100 mile an hour fastball. Big presence of Sikora, and I mean big presence. As that one comes home, he flags it, bobbles it, recovers, and then realizes I'll take the out right in front of me. As he had him in the line of fire there, Ralphie Velasquez, but he turned it into an out. I've been very impressed with Sikora's slider. You know, Holcomb did a good job on it, but, but that was a nice slider. It's been very well located. Sometimes location, when you throw that hard, is, is more important than the sheer quality. But it's a better slider than he showed in uh, Tropicana Field earlier this month. Travis, six feet, six inches tall, and he gets to know Antonio Anderson now, a young man who's a Georgia Tech commit out of Atlanta, Georgia. A couple of years back with the Select Festival Most Valuable Player. Fires that one to the backstop at 98 miles an hour as that one shot in the left field. Could get interesting. Maxwell Clark to the plate. Not in time. Couple of miscues and a run for the East. Holcomb comes all the way around. And these are the things that can happen when you're not on your, your usual team and the adrenaline's going a little bit too hard. You want to slow the heartbeat down, but this is the classic Tim Flannery run thrown in, the RTI, and just A little bit of throwing around, Holcomb hustling. Swings right through that fastball at 98. Good point, your last point. I love that because it was fun. He took a chance by coming on home, and he, the big fella, big like you, he hopped right up and took on. Yeah, you know, just keep going, keep getting dirty, can come out and play some baseball, and made it happen. Fastball is high, living 98, 99, as we said, he touched 100 during this contest switch hitter this is a switch hitter who is sticking with it to this point big Braves fan change, change up. up yeah 87 <laughs> he's, he's working he's showing off all, showcasing all the pitches now David with regards to the switch hitting is there is there like a threat to, like is there one side that he's a little bit better with Antonio I think he's pretty even all the times I've seen him play I've always considered him even a legit switch hitter who can take it whether it's the college level the pro level and, and continue to build on it so he went change up and then right behind it 99 for strike three yeah and this is the educated cheese slow him down speed him up four seamer right there and not a lot of carry but a lot of heat well there was a day not too recently in baseball that the idea of of pitchers who throw especially in the upper 90s like Charlie Soto and Sikora do throwing change ups it's like why do they need a change up 
but because of travel ball and the high level of competition these guys face during the summer on almost like a weekly basis, pitchers have to develop a third pitch. And that old cliche about, oh, they'll learn a, a high school guy will learn a, a change up in the pros really doesn't apply anymore. Trey Phelps with a big swing of 100 miles an hour. Phelps is out of Atlanta, Georgia. He attends Georgia Premier Academy where Gene Reynolds and his staff do such a great job. And he's a Georgia Bulldog commit. And to your point, David, the changeup is the best pitch in the game. And we're in the information age. Everyone has access to the greatest mind. So why not figure it out as quick as you can? Skipped it in there again 100 miles an hour. I don't want to take this for granted. This is a young man who has yet to set foot in his senior year of high school throwing 100 on it. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty wild to think. And he is uh, it's a it's an aggressive 100 as well. He is letting it fly. He's got the angry face on. One and two the count on Trey Phelps. Fires that one. I'll give you a bit of what he shared with us taking notes in the South scouting report and I quote I'm extremely competitive on the mound. I love to attack hitters with velocity. I like to always mess with hitters minds by starting them off first pitch or two pitches with something off speed. Those are his words. That's good old fashioned hardball. A hundred a handful of times this inning. Wow. We got triple digits right here and it is arms elbows in rocket fire. <laughs> The East leads the West one to nothing at the perfect game all American classic Alex Clemmy takes the mound for the East and guys I talked to him earlier this week. He told me that he's going to throw his fastball until somebody hits it. That's how confident he is in that pitch. He loves the Chris sale comparison both Boston guys big lefties. I know you're going to dive into that and here's a great story he shared with me his grandpa Charles Hurley owned a furniture store and Alex said he would go to that store every day and play catch and hit with his grandpa while mom would work upstairs. They are best friends and he said my grandpa is the reason I am who I am on the mound Darren. Oh that's great stuff Danny Wexelman we appreciate it. And daughter of course is Elizabeth Clemmy. That's his mom. Dad is Ian and so we watch him go to work. It's, it's interesting David. It's it's a unique comparison when you compare him to Chris Sales certainly when you ask him about himself he'll tell you I, a man with a three pitch mix fastball curveball change up heavy spin and then a curveball with heavy spin as well. I can execute all three pitches in any count. That's his self scattered report. Yes and he says he's going to go out and throw throw uh, all fastballs until they can hit it. He's got a lefty leading off the inning and from that arm slot you know Chris Sale comparison was made there. You know I might think of mixing in a, a breaking ball lefties because he throws a really really good one. Out of Huntington Beach California Huntington Beach High School he just won the home run challenge earlier today. Ralphie Velasquez Rafael his given name. Catcher in a first baseman I love watching him catch though. Pulls the hands in, puts it on the ground. It was a fastball. It was a very nice play out there made by George Lombard, covering a ton of ground. Yeah, this was this was silky smooth right there by George wow. Lombard and makes this backhand charging ground ball. Here we go. Let's watch this silky smooth. Nice and soft hands, throwing on the run, right on the money. And what makes that play is the route he took to the ball. A lot of second basemen, especially young second baseman would go back on the ball and then plant and throw. He cut that off and made the quick throw and might have been the only way to get the runner. I've enjoyed getting to know this young man for the last couple of years Andrew Wiggins. He goes after the first pitch. It was Danny's on it all fastballs racing up the line. He's out of Indiana. Andrew is an Indiana commit. We'll talk more about him but the one thing that I enjoyed most about Wiggins on some of our conversations and some of our content he's a very competent and talented saxophone player unafraid unafraid to play it on the air for us on call without any notice so he just grounded out too quickly to yeah. set up the story are we, are we on a two pitch inning so far <laughs> we're looking at a, a, a record here three pitch inning potentially we'll see if Roman takes one Roman's out of Whittier California he's a UCLA commit Servite High School this is Roman Martin and he does take one right just above the top tier of the strike zone at 95 miles an hour. 
I like that Clemmy works from the stretch. You know, obviously no runners on, two outs, and he's working from the stretch. And when you're big and tall like that, there's some effort to the del delivery that just simplifies your mechanics, enables you to repeat better. It's a great league in Southern California and CIF baseball. It's the Trinity League, and most of the power schools are in that league. He, MVP of that league. That tells you how talented Roman Martin is. Middle infielder can play on the corners as well defensively as he takes that one inside for two inside and he sends him to first Roman is on. Should have stuck with the fastball. Yeah, he, he told us he was only throwing <laughs> fastballs so they hit it. I guess uh, they hit it a ground ball. But you know you're saying Chris Chris sale but I see a lot more Kershaw. Here's you know it, it, the big curveball the big fastball and he has a little bit of the left handed drop before he releases it and that to me when you're facing Kershaw is what made him so tough is that like that dip before he threw and he kind of has that same dip. Would you rather face Kershaw or sale. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> this is Dylan head he's out of Glenwood Illinois. USA prime national his travel team he's at Homewood Flossmore High School. Gary is dad Sonia is mom and the little brother it's Blake. Oh gosh. <laughs> I don't know how he caught that and hugged him at the same time. Technically, he's out, too, I would believe, too, as well, because he, he wasn't standing on the base. Uh, uh, yeah. let's, let's see what happened here. Watch his oh, right, no, right foot. No, he's <laughs> way out. He's way out. Talk me through his swing a little bit, David. It's a, it's a, it's a nice combination. Usually, when, when hitters run like, like, like Dylan Head runs, a lot of times they they are taught or encouraged to you know to to shorten up, you know make contact, put the ball on the ground, use your your big tool, and Head can do that. But he also has very good pitch recognition and has shown many times that he can open up that front side and lift the ball. And it's a good combination. He can slap, go the other way just fine. But he's he's quick twitch enough and sees the ball well enough to open up that front side on his pitch and get the ball in the air and and, and create some carry. Outstanding speed as David talked about as a matter of fact a state record at the junior high level in the 100. Runners on the move fired down no one there to cover so a stolen base. Now watching watching Dylan had this is a great bag right here. Zion Roman. Rose is catching. But for Dylan head. Uh, let's watch this replay. It's probably your shortstop covering but usually. It can be tough and it looks it, like the second baseman was supposed to cover because yeah. he's the one that heads there. <laughs> but a lot of these communications in these games are not really clear. Patient walk with a fastball. You were talking about head a little bit too. Well just that that sprint speed you were talking about watching the eye test live is insane. That ball he caught in center field as the left fielder and that yeah he's <laughs> he, uh, he's impressed me a lot just watching that at bat the poise and you know, facing the lefty, here's Clint Hurdle, 17 seasons as an MLB manager. One of the better guys, one of the great guys in baseball. It brings the energy. But Choosing it's... to do what he wants to do at this point in his life. He loves being around young athletes, and Clint is managing down there as well. Oh. That one is crushed. Rock Jalowski toward the corner. It goes. Diving attempt, but that one ends up foul. Rock jumped on that first pitch. A little bit off the end of the bat. I like I like the Isaiah Duke dive like just you know maybe it'll fall in the glove you never know. It's Isaiah Drake by the way in left field. Isaiah Drake. Yes. What did I say. I thought I said Isaiah. Yes. Number 13 on that jersey Isaiah did go into the dive. Because why not. Yeah. It's why an all American not? game. Get dirty. Rock a local product but he plays for the Canes national travel team Jeff Petty runs that great program you talked about his dad. Dan being a longtime man in baseball now with the Cincinnati Reds his mom is Tika as that one misses inside and his mom is courageous multiple cancer survivor and that's been a big part of their home it's been something that has aged him a lot more quickly than his family would have liked to have had occur but rock has grown because of it and on his way to third Zion Rose with the runner trailing behind a second opted just to hold on to the baseball. And can we get a view of the the trail of Dylan Head? I just want to look at this speed a little bit. 
Bryant's not getting a ton of help. Pretty slow to home right now for Clemmy. He's just letting the fastball eat. And then you just take advantage of it if you're on the base pads. Rock fly to right field. Back in the first inning. Breaking ball pretty and it got the outside corner. There's that Kershaw 12 to 6 yep. right there. Yep. Beautiful pitch. And you could almost sense he has a little more confidence in that pitch than the fastball which has gotten a little wild in the last couple offerings. Rushed off and left his arm behind on that one. Maybe tried to throw it a little bit better, Mr. Clemmy. The old trap. I threw that one good. I'm just going to add a little more sizzle <laughs> to it. Lost him. It's ball four. So we had a couple of pitches and a couple of outs, and now things have gone off the tracks just a little bit. And we were worried about a three pitch inning at one point, weren't we? Yeah, but well now uh, things, you know, as soon as he went away from the fastball, it, it got a little weird. The, the breaking ball that hit, uh, hit Roman, and then Dylan another walk. And so just a little bit of command issues. No one's hitting him hard. So Maxwell Clark gets to hit for the second time now. The number one player in the nation plays for the Indiana Bulls travel team. That one rushed to the plate at 94, but it's up and in. We saw Clint Hurdle a moment ago. Charles Johnson, longtime Major League catcher, is on his staff as well. Chris Raymond, a high school coach at Liberty High School. Michael Deardoff, a high school coach at Sunrise Mountain High School. And Lloyd Thompson, part of that staff as well. Lloyd founding the home plate Chili Dogs travel team in Georgia. That's Clint staff. Charles Johnson will be uh, in your chair next week. Hunter Pence will be my color analyst for the 14 U Select Festival. But he gets to be down in the dugout coaching this week. Nice. Do it all. Four times he won a gold glove. Four times. That doesn't happen by accident. They don't just give those away. No, they don't. All right, let's see if he can find the zone here. Threw him a breaking ball. And the count 2 0. Oh. It was a couple of years ago there was an event known as the World Wood Bat Association World Championship. It's for seniors. This man had a 500 on base in that event as he rolls that one to the backstop. He was a sophomore playing amongst the seniors and he had an incredible event got on base 10 times against players two years older than him. David I think you'll tell me that's when he jumped on the map. That would be because that's the most heavily scouted Scouting event in the in the calendar it's going to be I believe October 6th through 10th this year down in Jupiter. It's at the spring training home of the Marlins and the Cardinals. And every field on all the quads full. The best travel ball players in the country. Most of the seniors. Because that one is rolled foul. By design Maxwell Clark plays a lot at home plays high school plays multiple sports. He's not a guy that's been to 50 60 travel ball events. No not at all. In fact we we've, we've got him to a few events just quickly for it for a day or two because he, he stays busy. He likes being at home. Um, he's a very loyal to to his Indiana you know the Indiana Bulls and to his high school team and such. He's on a heck of an at bat here he too. He's not trying to do too much with uh, any of those pitches. Really, it looks like he's just trying to foul them off. Shared bullpen down there. One of the unique things of this All-American Classic. Hunter, I loved watching you hitters in the big leagues spoil a pitch like that and hoping to get one more chance. We always forget to talk about the pitch you spoiled if you get a hit. Yeah, you gotta, you know, you gotta spoil those good ones and hopefully get a mistake pitch. 2-2 lifted a mile high toward left. Hangs up for a long time. Isaiah Drake though puts it away and the bases remain loaded. That left-hander Alex Clammy cleaned it up very nicely. Wow. That's a lot of gear. Oh, I got some Oakleys too. It's amazing. Slides. These slides are sick. PG always gives the best gear. We got a Dick Sporting Goods card. Wow. $200. This is amazing. Yeah, they got everything. Batting gloves, Rawlings. Shout out to Rawlings. How they look. This gear is awesome. Feels good. It's nice and light. I can't wait to use these Sunday right over there. This is great. Thank you guys for the gear. PG's the best. Can't wait to play in the game Sunday. 
that's an L.A. guy through and through doing some acting through that whole skit. Well done. All the gear. This is Xander Muth. He's out of Illinois, and he's grabbed the, the scouts, David, all of your attention for, the, for a while now. He's an Ole Miss commit, Xander Muth. And for him, out of Milstad, Illinois. Craig and Melissa are his parents, and he's, he's the younger brother to older sister Hannah, Xander Muth. We've been talking a lot about kids from the upper Midwest today with Head and, and Clark, Xander Muth. Here's from another one hitting. Illinois. Zion Rose, Zion from, Rose Chicago. from Chicago. So this isn't all about, about, about Florida and Texas and Georgia and California. What are we going to see in Xander Muth before I introduce Zion? Well, the first thing you're going to see is this extended mid three quarters arm slot that just puts serious sink on the ball at times. We serious <laughs> run as well. <laughs> serious run as well. But uh, it's it's a sinker slider uh, package from 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 that angle. He's been up to 96. And uh, a young man who's improved so much. We we saw him for the first time a year ago. And he's just leapt up since there. Zion's out of Chicago, a talented catcher, but also can play center field. He's that kind of an athlete. He's a Louisville commit. He's at Brother Rice High School, where Sean McBride is his head coach. Karen and Sean are his parents, and he's a heck of a student. He's rolling with a 3.8 GPA in the classroom. That one paints the outside corner. There we got to see that running late running life there bringing it really a backdoor fastball to taking it into the box left hand batter's box bringing it back over the corner. There's the slider. Yeah I, I kind of like the angles just a couple pitches that we've seen that Xander's able to kind of obviously he's going to have to learn to command all of that movement but it's it's definitely some some tough angles to deal with as a hitter. It's not just a natural over the top. You can see the ball very well off of him. Ern himself a walk. He was the MVP of the Catholic League this past spring. First team all state in Illinois, and there's a lot of great baseball. And I love how Dan McDonald out of Louisville continues to recruit. You and I have had conversations with the head coach of Louisville, continues to recruit cold weather state guys, and then he just wins with them. You know, if you're going to have some cold weather early on in the season, you might as well get guys that are used to it. But just a, a amazing what he's able to do for that. that that college that university that's yeah, courageous recruiting and it works here's George Lombard he's a little different his spot in the world he's out of Miami Florida you remember certainly his father goes by the same name professional baseball player for 16 years mom was a gymnast mom Judy was a gymnast at Rutgers National Honor Society in the classroom as he is driven back to the bag is Rose and Lombard if there was a summer player of the year name today it might be Lombard. He's hitting 508 this summer. He had a string of nine straight base hits in the playoffs at the 17U National Championships. He's just been on fire all summer. Zion's on the move. Throw down. He swiped that one. Got a nice jump. Better Helfrick is working behind home plate currently. This is an all-around athlete, not just a catcher. Yeah, it's great to see catchers. He's a big fella too, and look at him digging. And just beats the throw from Ryder. A 6 4 4 runner in the 60, you know, which is, is, you know, plus big league speed. And I wouldn't be surprised if Rose doesn't end up at a middle of the field position aside from catcher with all that athleticism and speed. Well, I'm going to tell you right now this George Lombard watching, watching the grounder that he fielded, and he's, he was playing a shallow right field at second base, and, and just that swing right there, it doesn't surprise me that. He's been performing well. It's very, very smooth swing, short two, long through. Looks good. Late reaction to that jumping fastball at the end. That's that run that you talked about, David. It grabbed the outside corner and elicited a swing and a miss. He was looking slider yeah. on that pitch. Yeah, too. he looks very fooled by this. This yeah. is uh, this is just uh, he's like really late. Yeah. And must have been two strike looking off speed trying to fight off the fastball but yeah he looked really confused on that one. Here's Alfonso Rosario five star national his travel team. P27 Academy is where he attends and. This is a young man that's committed to go play at Chipola one of the great junior colleges in all the land what an amazing program. 
Yeah, Rosario just came to the United States from the Dominican about a year and a half ago. Wasn't even ranked coming into the PG National and put on a show through 101 from the outfield. Hit balls in Tropicana onto the concourse and left center field during batting practice. Uh, very strong young man, but always smiling. I've seen him all week here, and he has a perpetual smile on his face. Juan Reyes, successful major leaguer, is a family member, a cousin. Another Igwe Rosario is in the Padres organization. No one there to cover the bag for the pickoff move. A slip past the bag, and he hangs on to Zion Rose. Tried to pop a tag down there on him and slip away to Trent Caraway. I think uh, they go for a random pickoff. He throws it. Uh, yeah, West having a little bit of trouble throwing the ball around here and then maybe got him there oh I don't think we have replay well, there's no replay it's <laughs> funny they showed the replay hunter two in house on the beautiful scoreboard in center field and all the players pointed at it can we can we overturn it now <laughs> Reggie's out here arguing look, look at Reggie to be fair they who they had a I believe it was a rider Writer who was off with Roman. Roman Martin was out at first, you know. Yeah. Stuff. They were, they're just letting them let the kids play. I agree with you, Hunter. I agree wholeheartedly with you. <laughs> Look at Trent. They'll bring the infield in. Reggie Sanders says, bring him in. It was great last night. Reggie Sanders gave away at our awards ceremony the, the five tool award sponsored by Dick Sporting Goods. And if ever a guy could give away a five tool award, a 300 300 guy, home runs and stolen base in his career. He lived the five tool yes, game. Yes, he did. He could play. He was a smart hitter, athletic, did it all. There just can't be too many 300 300 players. Now the list is very short. Both Bonds are on that list. Carlos Beltran's on that list, just to pop a few into my head. To the right side, a little bluff on the tag there. Gavin Grohovic hung with that roof and pulled it in very nicely. I was inter interested to see if they were going to try to challenge the arm. I know it was shallow, but they decide to hold back. Reggie was on that world championship team. Saw the memories of 2001. Luis Gonzalez is our honorary chairman of this event. And Gonzo, of course, uh, probably the most well known World Series heroes. He walked it off World Series style. Back to the top and Drew Burris. 95 with some sink and he fouls it off. And you're going to want to bring the infield in a little bit after I watched Drew Burris run down to first right there. There's some speed. This All American, PG All American Classic. Well, I should also tell you, Drew Burris has 11 homers this summer and on power. the travel circuit. So <laughs> he's probably leading the summer circuit in home runs as well. You don't wear lightning bolt shoe color if you're not fast. But yeah, I could see the pop too. He's got some pythons, got some, some biceps. He plays to the role of being undersized. He'll make it clear. I realize I am. I've overcome it by continuing to prove I'm one of the best players in the class. No matter what my height is. And of course, Jet Williams, first round pick out of Texas this year, was a player that played at what, David? 5'9, five, 5'10, five, played himself into the first round. Yeah, and of course, we have Tamar. Tamar Johnson, you know, 5'8 himself. That's the beauty of baseball. We come, you know, baseball players come in all shapes and sizes skinny, big, tall, short. That one is high. Elbow drop below that one just a little bit to Drew. Three and one the count. Burris this year was a 2022 Georgia High School Player of the Year. As far as baseball hotbed states go, that's right near the top of the list. He was the player of the year as he rolls that one foul. In fact, at the risk of offending some of our fine players and avid listeners, I would say that Georgia has surpassed Texas as the number three state in the country. Well, now with. you've done it. Now you've wow. done it. Now what you've offended debate. him. What a oh, debate. Oh, boy. Still putting California and Florida in one of those orders in the one and two spots. I love this debate. My goodness. Three and two, the count of Burris as he buries that one in on his hands, pops it up to the right side, and it's turned into an out by Carl Schmidt. 
Clint Hurdle will chat with Danny Wexelman, and we'll do that whole Georgia Texas thing throughout the rest of the day as well. Welcome back to Chase Field. The East team still leading the West by a run. I'm with Clint Hurdle, manager for the East. 17 seasons, though, as a big league manager. What does this opportunity mean to you? It's a different opportunity with a lot of similarities. It's fun. I enjoy watching young men play. I got my youngest bench coach, TJ, that I've ever had. Uh, there's not a low lot of managing going on, Danny, really, in this game. Everything's pretty well scripted, what we need to do and who needs to play. So I'm just enjoying my the company I have tonight. How about this, though? What do you or how, what is the approach when you're facing 94 to 99 out there on the mound? How do these guys adjust themselves in the box? You get ready to hit the fastball. I mean, you can't sit back and read the pitch and, okay, now I'm going to put foot down and go. When it's 95 and higher, you got to get ready to go. If the spin plays for strikes, it's going to be problematic and it's going to be challenging. Right now, we've got a pretty good, pretty good opportunity being ready to hit. We took some advantages on the bases, so whoever pitches the best is going to win at the end of the day. That hasn't changed at any level. Clint, thank you so much. You're welcome. Darren. Yeah, good stuff, Danny Wexelman. Clint Hurdle, his wisdom. Uh, he and I, by the way, host a podcast every couple of weeks. 13 pieces of bubble gum, because that's how many pieces of bubble gum Clint used to chew every game when he was managing. Meet Garrett Bauman. He's out of Oviedo, Florida. He is a UCF commit, FTB Philly scout team. And he goes to Haggerty High School. And Garrett is a big presence on the mound. He is the son of Anita and Chuck. A big presence indeed, 6'8", 240 pounds, but has a very calm delivery. He's always been a strike thrower. You can see not a lot of effort there, and looks like he leads off with a changeup. Changeup's his second best pitch. He's usually, you know, 93, 94, touch of five with his fastball, but a changeup is a big weapon for him. Second time we've seen the talented Kevin McGonigal as he looks at a pitch that gets the upper tier of the strike zone. McGonigal, the son of Tracy, and dad is Kevin. He's very heavily decorated McGonigal as a PG Perfect Game athlete. Last year at Perfect Games, WWBA in the summertime, who's the MVP. His guy, Chase Utley. That's a good one. That was a, good, that was a teammate of mine. And, I knew and I'd tweak you with that Yeah, one. you got me. Left-handed hitter, I get you. He was a smart hitter. But I, I'm impressed here with with Bowman just you know perfect game all American classic on ESPNU no big deal I'm just going to start off with a change up <laughs> as calm as you know a, a cool as a cucumber. And then the fastball plays at 95. Charles Johnson doing some teaching Zion Rose his pupil. Well, how cool is that. That's perfect game in a nutshell right there. Zion's hanging on every word I can guarantee. You. On the ground. Played nicely before it got to that second hop and turned into an out over there. 97 on that fastball which I'm pretty sure is the fastest pitch Bauman's ever thrown. And here's Dylan Cup charging. Handles it. Nice throw. Last up, this is uh, about my 13th-ish inning uh, of Perfect Game All-American Classic. And, uh, you know, your Georgia-Texas comment, I haven't seen a West Coast hit yet, so I can't really argue with you. Well, if you missed it last year, folks, the West, they were no hit in the All-American Classic. To the right side. Boy, look at Dylan Cup again. Nice play. Dylan can play multiple places on the field, and David, you've been seeing him for years at Perfect Game events. Yeah, and he's been the shortstop for these Cobb Astros for a long time, but plays shortstop, and this is impressive. We saw it with Lombard, and we see it with Dylan Cup right here. When you're that athletic enough that you, even though you play shortstop, have that different second base footwork that goes into making plays like that. The fifth ground out to the second baseman for the West Coast team. Will Gasparino grounded out. Blake Mitchell steps up. The Texan takes a sinking fastball that dives low. Almost had the look of a firm changeup there to Mitchell. I, I think that's what his balance changeup is firm. Usually not this firm, but usually he doesn't throw 95 97 either. There's a slider. And a good one. Good. You ask Bauman who inspires him. He said it's his grandfather. His grandfather 
played in high school, played well, then joined the Navy at 18 and played on the Naval baseball team. What's so impressive is, is yeah, he's throwing harder, but it doesn't look like he's max efforting. It's so calm, like you said, David. And a lot of times, a lot of the, you know, talking with different pitchers when, you know, they have their good velo, they'll always say, usually when I reared back and tried to throw it really hard, I didn't get my best bolt. It's a lot of times that gentle, similar to hitting, you, don't, you take a softer swing and you hit a lot more power. And we see that at showcase. I see it at showcases almost every week where, because everybody wants to get, you know, the number. They're all there to post the number. And uh, and yeah, that's fine, but it's rarely when they're trying to. I've seen pitchers who throw harder in warm-ups than they do in the game, because in the game, then they get tense and everything like that. The Texas Player of the Year this year, Blake Mitchell rolls that one out towards short. Three outs, all on the ground. The last one turned in by George Lombard, All-American Classic. Our game break is brought to you by our good friends with Yeti. We saw Cam Johnson open things up with a firm arm, and it was lively. And baseballs that had funky spin off the end of the bat that ended up helping Eric Batanti. But it's been a, a pitcher show, shooting the other side of the diamond as well. And then aggression has taken over. Antonio Anderson watched as that was thrown away and Braden Holcomb come on now that's about 6-6 six, six coming to the plate and that's the only run in this game Travis Sikora threw a hundred three times on the mound and lived in the upper 90s those are the faces of the very best players heading into their senior year Danny Wexelman, Hunter Pence, David Ronson, Darren Sutton welcome back to the perfect game All-American Classic this young man's out of Wisconsin. I vividly recall, David, the two innings that we called at the TROP at the National Showcase when Dylan Questad worked. He's an Arkansas commit. He's at Waterford Union High School, the son of Jennifer and Sean. And DQ. This, and this is a power approach. Questad struck out six and had a broken back ground out in his that performance you just described. Struck out six because he had a, a pass ball there, but it was just pure, pure cheese, Wisconsin cheese. You know, 95, 96, a lot of it up in the zone with a lot of riding life. As well played by you, the, the mention of cheese there, understanding the cheese head that the Packer fan wears in support. Walker Jenkins takes up and in. First pitch, 94 miles an hour. Jenkins 0 for 1, lifted his baseball in the left field. The young man who's a North Carolina commit. I think that ball that uh, Dylan Head tracked down off off Jenkins bats probably the hardest hit ball we've had so far in this pitcher's duel quite possibly and pitching in defense is usually the key to these games back to the screen it goes hip surgery was along the way for Walker Jenkins he calls it a great challenge that he had to overcome he said I looked on the positive side and while I rehabbed my injured hip and then recovered from surgery everything else got smarter Everything else got stronger. My mind got sharper. There's no replacement for playing games unless you use that time when you're down to grow in other ways. And that's what that's what Walker Jenkins says he did after that hip injury. I think that response says a lot about the, the person, the player, the character, which is something that you really want to look into if you're drafting or bringing him on to your college program. So that mentality, that attitude towards the hardship means a lot. And he patiently worked his way to first. We get a chance to see the Jackie Robinson, the National Player of the Year, hit again in Aiden Miller. When you ask Miller to describe his family, he says, they're my rocks, all for different reasons. My mom keeps everything together. My dad, who's helped me become the, the person and the player that I am. And of course, his brother, Jackson, a second round pick by the Reds in 2020. Hit firm out towards short. There is one on to first. That is a double play, George Lombard. And that might have been the hardest hit ball just right at the shortstop because he barreled this and not where you want to barrel it, David. No, no, that's a that's an easy 6-4-3. Rawlings gold glove play of the game. It was started by Roman Martin. And it was turned over very quickly by Carl Schmidt. On to first it went where Nolan Stevens turned in out number two. That one missed just off the plate. 
looked like it might have been flip flop Schmidt to Martin or Martin to Schmidt but they were both involved in the middle. Here's Arjun Namala. High fly ball right field boy he just missed driving that baseball. I mean just missed it. The dangerous Namala is retired two outs in the air double play to boot this inning PG all American. Well, no surprise when you look at the commitments of these athletes, John Savage at UCLA, and then of course the success at Vanderbilt and Arkansas. And it's interesting to think about UCLA here in a couple of years moving to the Big Ten, what that might do. But you know, we, we saw David a recent great example of a high power arm in Kumar Rocker who opted to go to college and pitch at Vanderbilt and then maybe didn't have it go the way he wanted to go after being drafted in 2021 as Colton Hartman goes to work but then pitching his way to the third pick this year in the draft not everyone goes immediately to pro baseball out of this game many go to college oh yeah and I think it's, it's something that Major League Baseball has done a lot to even encourage over the years uh, much like the like other sports use college as a a sort of a development program um, the one thing you just love to see though if, if we're going to uh, as, a, as a game push more and more kids to college I wish they used the same equipment okay and use the wood bats and everything like that but certainly anytime you're talking about going to UCLA a Vandy you know that, that that's the same list every year that's up there Arkansas a couple other schools these are elite programs they're going to get taught at a very very high level. But I just wish they used the same kind of bats. We'll tell you about Colton Hartman. He's from Lebanon, Ohio. He's another member, the third member of that Indiana Bulls travel team. He's a Louisville commit, another cold weather state guy that they're bringing to Louisville, and they're doing it with success. He's the son of Tiffany and Scott, and he's been active this summer. Young man who's out of Lebanon High School. Sister, an outstanding athlete. Madison wrapped up her career playing college softball at Wright State. California native Eric Batanti takes in and off the plate. He's six foot five inch high talent middle infielder one and oh the count. Two and oh the count as he patiently watches that two seamer dive down and in. These are the high school numbers <laughs> high school 526 eight homers. 1600 OPS. <laughs> That's a heck of a 2 0 pitch right in on his knuckles. And I mean, he took a healthy <laughs> hack, and I like to see that. It wasn't the pitch he wanted, but he came here to swing. Well, the one thing I've noticed about Patante really over the last month and a half, seeing him a few times, he's a very, very patient hitter. He's going to be a young man who walks a ton at the next level, which is, is of course, very important. But when he takes a hack, he doesn't hold back in. Lifted into left field. A trio of East defenders come together and leaving his feet there is Adrian Santana. Wow! Glad to have you with us at the All-American Classic where we see plays like this, Hunter. Yeah, he went a long ways to make this play. It made it look easy, even though he lays out there. He had to cover some ground, and it was fun. It's fun to watch how fast these young guys are. Adrian ranging from that shortstop position. Gavin Grohovic for the second time. Gavin looks at a nice breaking ball that drops in there. Yeah, a year ago you would not have thought that Hartman would have been a candidate for this game. He was pitching in the mid to mid 80s mostly, but gained about 20 pounds of muscle over the offseason. We've talked before with other kids, you, you know, use their downtime to get strong. He went from 6'1", 185 to 6'3", 215 in a, in a calendar year, and the stuff went up with it. I saw 95 on that last fastball. I asked him what you do and he said simple I'm not going to describe it a lot it was five days a week and it was working very very hard five days a week. Just got a piece of it and look David it's simple right it's biology there are times between 15 and 18 that athletes will develop at different ages it happens to different athletes at different ages. Oh, most definitely. 
you know, we've talked about Gasparino, Will Gasparino earlier, and looking at him now, 6'6", 215. He was about 6'5", 185 last year at the same time. So these kids work, but there's also some genetics and just growing up involved. And I really am enamored a little bit with his delivery, how he just kind of has this slow delivery, kind of like leans back, like I'm just chilling, and then lets it fly. It's explosive the way it comes out of his hand. Swings right through that lively 92 mile an hour fastball. Gavin goes down on strikes. Now watch the hips here. Watch his hip. Yeah, yeah. We know the hips there because he gets those hips turned and coiled, those strong, strong hips now, and he opens them fast and tight. Yeah, and right, so watch yeah. this. Yeah. Bam. And, and that's, that's carry. I know it's 92, but you can see it planing out and staying above the hitter. And it's it, it, that ball is spinning right there. Ralphie Velasquez left on left. Dealing with Hartman. Takes a breaking ball that nips that outside corner for strike one to Ralphie. Well at the top of the show when when, when Danny Wexelman asked Velasquez about the change in swing he said oh I thought it was, I thought about it, using my wiffle ball swing. Well it wasn't quite as simple as that. What he did was he used to be wide and he's narrow real narrow now like maybe a foot between his back and his front foot and he also lowered his hand so he's like put himself in that launch position right away with his hand path but also freed up his hips by by lining up more narrow and he had one home run going into the last week of the regular season he had eight during the playoffs the CIF playoffs and just dominated Southern California baseball after he made that change. He did it for Benji Maduri, the head coach at Huntington Beach High School, the great program. He's committed to go to ASU and play for Willie Bloomquist, the head coach of that ASU program. He's the son of Nicole and Armando, and we saw him at 14. He was a member of Perfect Games 14 U Select Festival a couple of years ago. Breaking ball, easy approach, but it's on the ground and turned into an out. Raging is Adrian Santana, two nice plays. PG All-American Classic. For those of you watching on ESPN News, we are back on ESPNU. So, we'll see you there. Welcome back to Chase Field. I am so excited because we are with the manager of the West, Reggie Sanders, 17-year Major League Vet World Series champ. Reggie, I've seen you all week long. What does this opportunity mean to manage this team? Well, it's an honor, number one. You know, when I got the call for uh, me to do this, I said absolutely on the first uh, call. And then getting an opportunity to be here and just to see the way that the players are just so respectful and they love the game and they just want to just go out and do, you know, play baseball and be the best that they possibly can be. So it's been an honor thus far. When you were their age, what were you like? Because I see these guys. Well, tell me what you were like at their age. Well, I really don't. I would like to think I was as big as they are, but I don't think I was. But, uh, but I was hungry and, uh, and, had, and had a desire in my heart to, uh, to achieve my dreams, and thank God I was able to do that. Now, I don't know if you know this, but last year the West team failed to get a hit. My friend, I'm looking at that board right now. Hey, don't you bring that energy over here. No, we're going to win this thing, all right? <laughs> I like that. I like that. Last one for you, Luis Gonzalez, right, the ambassador of this game. Part of that magical 2001 had the walk-off hit. What's the relationship like you guys being out here back at Chase? Yeah, well, it's always an honor just to be in this stadium because there were so many great memories, not only for myself, but my, for my family as well, and also to see Luis Gonzalez, who's a close and dear, dear friend of mine. And uh, so we just embraced ourselves when we saw each other. Yeah, I've seen a lot of fun between you two. Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> Darren, they, they said they're going to get a hit and they're going to win. I'm going to send it back to you Stay now. Stay tuned, Danny Wexelman. Love Reggie Sanders. Gonzo here. Trevor Hoffman here. Gonzo, his teammate, of course, the Hall of Famer Trevor Hoffman. Ben Ford pitched in the major leagues for the Milwaukee Brewers and the Diamondbacks, a key member of the perfect game leadership. Gabe Gackle takes the mound. He's out of Aptos. California. He's a UCLA commit and this talented right-hander David the one thing we start with is the breaking ball because the average numbers on the spin rate 2984 that's average. That's the average. He, he'll get into the 3000s tonight. That's elite level. Um, fastball still pretty good up to 95 96 but it's the breaking ball that, that defines him and we really haven't seen that nasty breaking ball from any of our pitchers so far but I think you, you might see one now. Power baseball, a great travel team. That's Braden Holcomb's team. And the hat flies off, and the fastball at 96. It's the outside corner to the son of Jason and Lynn. 
And wow, it doesn't look like the tall, huge frame, but 96 right out the gate. That comes off a second time, 95 miles an hour. Gacko, the son of Kelly and Peter. Aptos up there by Monterey, beautiful part of the world. Not too far, right on the water there in California, Central California. And he's back from Tommy John surgery. He had it in July of 2020. Breaking ball, ground ball, long play in the hole. Great effort there by T.J. Pompey, but unable to turn it into an out. Great athleticism. Good to see him in the game. That's a talent. And great. He's going to get his second knock of the ball game right here on that breaking ball. Good placement, and nothing you can do right here for T.J. Tries to jeter, but. Holcomb can fly. Yeah, the, the only times the Jeter works is when the catcher is running. <laughs> Something like the big, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't the work on the turbo speed yeah, guys. Yeah, the 35 year old big league catcher. Daniel Cuvet takes a pitch that dives just a little bit low. We saw that shot of Pompey just a minute ago out at shortstop. He's out of Capel, Texas, Capel High School. DJ has really done a lot of special things to get here. We'll introduce him to you. When he hits, breaking ball to the right side, and that one is fouled off. And that's a good approach for the breaking ball. Try to stay inside it, go with the pitch. Really nice bat path right there. The Miami commit grounded back to the mound, back in the second inning. There's the one you advertised. Yes, there, there, there's the 3,000 plus spinner. We're going to get Gackle a hat that fits, though. <laughs> Maybe that's the, the move. The, the new schmove is the hat that doesn't fit. Nope, not even close. One and two, the count. Elevated that fastball, so he goes breaking ball down, line of side up at 94 miles an hour. It's going to be interesting to see how the scouting community deals with Gackle because he's he's listed at 5'11", so you know he's an honest kid to begin with, not saying he's six feet tall. Plus, he's had Tommy John, um, but the stuff stands out. I mean, it's 94, 96 with that hammer, and I don't know whether that sub six foot right hander, you know, cliche is gone from pro ball. Look at Pompey stay on the bag. They turn a double play. It's obviously started by Gackle to knock it down, but TJ, a nice tap dance at second to turn it over. Yeah, this is this is the, the defense, and, and his fastball looks like it rises, and that's what I like about shorter guys that throw hard, and that's really nice by Pompey to catch that backhanded right there, stay smooth. He's got a good arm, good touch, but really, I, I always thought, like, if, most most pitchers that throw hard are taller. When you get the shorter guys that throw hard, it's a little bit unique. It almost feels like it rises on you. I, I'm a big fan of it personally. Antonio Anderson gets his opportunity. He struck out first at bat. That one is rolled to the right side. He hops off the mound. Little flip just to include his first baseman in the game. Hey, Nolan Stevens, turn this one into an out. Young man out of Aptos, California, Mr. Gackle, outstanding. Visit PerfectGame.org. Keep track of the rankings. David and his staff helped put these together. It wasn't too long ago that Noble Meyer was ranked about 150th in the nation. He's number two. Oh yeah, these things can change. There's a lot of names that are are very familiar. Maxwell Clark's been at the top top for a long time. Travis Sikor has been near the top for a long time. But it's a it's a, a growing organic document. It will change after uh, this game, and you know we've got a lot of baseball to play yet in 2022. So uh, there'll be some more changes. Maybe Liam Peterson will jump out today and make a loud statement saying, "Hey, I should be ranked higher than number 42." His travel team, the top tier Ruse, he's a Calvary Christian for Coach Greg Olson. As you saw, he's a Florida commit, and he is the son of Arlene and Paul. As he gets ready to go to work, he had a chance earlier this year to pitch at Dodger Stadium in that big event right around the All Star Game. And he gives all the credit in the world to. His love of the game of baseball to his grandfather who introduced him to the game of baseball. 
Oh, we were looking at the player rankings there. I should also mention this with team rankings, if you're curious what team might be ranked number one. I would say it's going to be Calvary Christian going next year. He oh is the f one of three pitchers from Calvary Christian in this All-American game. We'll see Landon Marotis later. Hunter Dietz isn't throwing because, because of an injury, but three pitchers in this game from one high school. Andrew Wiggins gets a chance to hit against this talented right arm. We saw Andrew earlier. He grounded out to the right side. The son of Camille and Eric. Mom, an attorney, played college sports, tennis, and cheered. Dad played three sports in college, both of them in Earlham College. Got a boy, good eye, good Mom's eye. an attorney Got now, and dad is a pastor at New Horizons Church in Indianapolis. Happy birthday. Yeah, go crazy, baby. Enjoy. <laughs> Let's go. Give me a Wiggins update. He feels like a riser to me. He definitely is a riser. He might be getting close to that top ten by the by the time we we uh, update those rankings. He's had such a good event here. He was so good at national. Just huge left-handed power. But but he just plays the game so under control. It's a it's a great pace to him. You mentioned his family. He comes from. A, Great family background, and that's how he carries himself on the field as well. And Indiana commit, he's worked the count to 3 2 now, rolls it out to the come left on, side, on, surrounding on. it and across the diamond. Boy, boy. Nice play made that time, an outstanding play, very comfortable by George Lombard. He's played everywhere defensively. Yeah, he's been everywhere, and it's been the same thing smooth glove, good arm, locks in right here. And it's the out. Yeah, he comes to the ball so well. That was a play there. If he hadn't been been right away, he would have got that between hops to his backhand and had no chance to make that yeah, play. Beautiful timing. Trent Caraway oh, gets yeah. the call to go to work. Trent is a Southern Californian, and so we see him with his first at bat out of Jay Sarah High School. He makes his home in Dana Point, California. This is a physical presence, and I mean kind of a football type physical presence who's incredibly athletic. This is Trent Caraway. Still plays the middle infield. I think he's a great third base profile. Um, also, also is a mid 90s guy off the mound, but he's really hit the ball well this summer. Squared up everything for a big guy. He doesn't take a big swing. It's more of a gap to gap short swing, short to it, long through it, as you said, Hunter. It looks like he's taking a big swing to me, right? Well, he now. did on that. That yeah. might be <laughs> a little adrenaline going. Uh -huh. I think he wants a fastball, and he's got two straight very good curveballs from Peterson. Plays for Brett K at J. Sarah, the outstanding high school coach who has coached on this All-American staff in the past. Caraway, the son of Tyler and Bobby, as he hangs around with that breaking ball. Making a bit of an adjustment, fouling that one off. Two-strike approach. They still have those these days. I like it. Trent plays for his brother Tate. He says he inspires me. And still plays just a bit. Saddleback College, his older brother, who's now 24 years old. That's his inspiration. Outside corner. Some cheddar. 96 miles an hour. That's strike three. Wow. And that was a nice little sequence from Peterson. Slow you down, slow you down, slow you down, slow you down. Oh, you foul it off. All right, now I'll give you the cheese biscuit. And, that, and that's 96, and there was some effort in that. But that was exactly where he wanted to throw it. Nice, loose, and whippy, and under control. Like that. Good if you like it. But again, look at oh, him. No. He doesn't shave yet. 6'5, 195, young face. Lots of growing to do. You're saying he's projectable? Yes, that would be is that the exactly word? the word, Hunter. Mississippi State commit Nolan Stevens gets his call to hit as he takes inside. Stevens out of Elk Grove, California, the son of Michael and Brooke. Brother Grant is a left handed pitcher at Pacific. And Brother Carson, twin brothers, plays at Cal Poly. A baseball family. As that one Atta dives boy. down and in. Come on now, come on. He was all state, Nolan, in the state of California, first team in 21 and 22. Not too far from the state capital in Sacramento. Boy, pretty <laughs> breaking ball. 12 to 6, late dip, high 70s. Throwing it righty wow. on lefty. Liam is definitely looking sharp. Do it again. Two and two. 
He's climbing up my charts, David. <laughs> I just, I just got to look at Greg Sabers, our, our vice president of scouting behind home plate, with a, with a big smile on his face, like that. Whoa! He's saying. The two-two. Bounced it in there. Got a, got a piece of our home plate umpire. Oh, Mujer's behind home plate. There's Mo. Carlos Galarza is at first base. Lalo Mendoza is at second. And John Flanagan is at third. Done a nice job tonight. And they always do. Yes, indeed. It's a tough job. It's not easy. It's been pretty, pretty nice behind the plate for sure. And these umpires are all, all members of the PG Umpire Association. Ump hundreds of games a year um, throughout the year. Very, very familiar to to all his PG scouts. So it's almost a reward for good work during the year. The breaking ball, a hammer, and that's strike three. Oh. The dugout went wild. Did you hear him screaming from the booth, Darren. <laughs> Liam Peterson. I want to shake that hand, the hand of the man that could spit it like that. Welcome back to Chase Field. I'm with Alex Omid Zahor, CEO of PG Tech. Alex, PG Tech, extremely exciting. I think to start, tell us what is PG Tech? PG Tech is the future of player development. So we bring big league technologies to perfect game showcases. And in just two minutes, we can capture the full picture of a player's swing using 3D motion capture, ball flight tracking, and more. Why do you think people should be so excited about this technology? What is it about it? Well, players should definitely be excited because we found a better way to increase your exit velocity. Using our database of over 10,000 hitters, we can essentially compare you to other players and create a snapshot of your swing, spot the part of your body that you need to work on most, and then give you a targeted training plan to improve it. And the results have been crazy. Players that train our plans have improved over five times faster than normal. Yeah, I've seen that myself with these young guys. And, and if they want to learn more, if they want to dive into PG Tech, where can they find that? Come check us out and chat with us at pgtech.com. We're so excited to help more players reach their potential. Alex, thank you. Thanks very much, Danny. Darren. Yeah, great stuff, Alex. Danny, thank you very much as we introduce you to a man who's put up some great metrics himself, Aiden Keenan out of Morgan Hill, California. He's a Stanford commit. He is at Live Oak High School. This is the son of Michelle and Chris. And this is a young man that has done a lot of good work the last couple of years. 4.2 GPA in the classroom as well. You've got to be if you're a Stanford commit. He's facing Trey Phelps. Trey looks at strike one at 93 miles an hour. Struck out in his first at bat to Trey. I believe that first at bat was against Travis Sikor in his 100. He's seeing a completely different pitcher here. And Keenan, you see the extended mid three quarters. Arm slot is just a heavy, heavy sinker baller, but a sinker baller that can get up to 95. Pulled his hands in. It's a hot shot out to third. A nice play. That's a just to protect your space play. Nazan Zanatello, the Missouri native, with an outstanding grab. Yeah, and, and Trey hit this ball well. He gets a short hop, stays with it, and makes a beautiful play right here. Nice good throw, nice stretch over there at first. For Eric Bitanti. That was nice. That was well played. They keep their cool. Yeah, this is sort of becoming the defensive All-American classic right <laughs> Pitching here. and defense. Pitching I'm a fan. Defense. But because we haven't seen a lot of quality, quality breaking balls, excusing last inning, of course, we haven't seen a lot of strikeouts, which has given the players, especially the infielders, so many opportunities to show their stuff, and they have. Keenan with that whippy arm, he'll share with you in his self scouting report. Low three quarter arm side run. I pound the zone with the fastball if it's right, low to mid 90s. Confident and athletic on the mound as well. That one flutters just outside of home plate to Zion Rose. Rose out of the greater Chicagoland, plays for the East Coast Sox. Pulls his hands in, dumps that one toward right field. It's down for a base hit. Take an aggressive turn. They'll sneak in behind him where he'll draw a throw. And he's back in there. And 
Zion, another productive AB. Walks in his first one right here. Shoots a nice little hand grenade out to right, but stays on this fastball and places it just right. Gotta love those hand grenades. You don't give them back. You don't throw them back. You I know you take them. That's a <laughs> knock. That's a good approach. The Rose is on. You saw the talent in right field. The number one player in the land, Maxwell Clark, tried to throw behind him. Here's George Lombard. Boy, he's played really well in the field, George Lombard. That's been one of the treats for him. And David, he's played second, he's played short, he's played third, he's been active at all three spots. And it's so nice to see these athletes play other positions. They're all shortstops. They're the best players on their team, the best athletes. But having him go to second, we saw Dylan Cup earlier do that. To see Lombard at third, to see Zanatello there at third earlier this inning. These are positions they haven't played a lot, but they rely on instincts and tools, and it's worked out well. Got to call a time out there on the third base side, John Flanagan. And did they call a balk? They did. Well, Rose's aggressiveness on the bases has really stood out, too. He had a steal his first time up, that aggressive move to third base. You know, Works a balk. Reggie wants to know exactly why and how the balk was called. He's chatting right now with, as we said, home plate umpire, Mo Mouge. Balk, I believe, was called by John Flanagan out there at third. And Reggie's going to have a brief conversation here in this. I like it in the All Star game, the All American Classic. I think this is a second conversation in, with the. He Flanagan. didn't show up not to work, Hunter. He yeah, showed up to yeah. manage. He's coming out and he's coming with it. He said, you know what, we're going to get a hit and we're going to win. I'm going to, I'm fighting for my, my guys out here. Reggie came to, came to win. Well, now he knows, too. It's a teaching moment when his pitcher gets back in the dugout. He can share with them exactly what he found out. And George Lombard. George, by the way, of the 4.9 GPA in the classroom. Of course, he's a National Honor Society's member. Vanderbilt commit. Coach Corbin's awaiting his arrival. How's that one back right behind home plate? Hunter and I are lucky enough to host a college baseball show each week, catching on Perfect Game TV. And our first interview we did together was with Coach Corbin of Vanderbilt. Yeah, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, Opportunity if you get a chance to go play for Vanderbilt and one of the greatest guys in baseball, beautiful mind, great leader. You're gonna learn, you're gonna learn some great stuff from him on and off the field. Oh, and to the count. Quick call of time. I'm gonna encourage you to go find that show because my favorite part about it is each week when we have players or coaches on that show, Hunter and I, it's an interview show, is how inquisitive and curious Hunter is as a partner and an analyst. I've never worked with anyone that takes such diligent notes and listens to the guest so well. I'm saying this in front of him like he's not here, but it's a fun listen. Go check it well, out. Darren, I definitely appreciate that, but some of the, the college university co head coaches are some of the greatest leaders, and I'm learning from them. I got a lot to learn. There's always more, and, and they are ahead of the game. It's impressive talking to a lot of these, these coaches. Runner at second. Breaking ball, Lombard takes to Vanderbilt commit, takes off the plate. He's like he's in an old air popcorn machine out there, just bouncing around. You folks remember that. I aged myself a little bit. There once was a time before microwave popcorn. Two and two the count. There he goes. That popcorn's popping. It's heading to third, but he'll have to go back. And man, for a big fella, he is scooting, and you gotta love that. He's you know, the pitcher, you can't can't super focus if there's popcorn bouncing around at second. <laughs> Look at him right here. Movement, movement, and just booking. Yeah, I had a scout tell me at the PG National and talking about Rose, he said he runs like a running back. He does. He looks like a running and back. Yes, he looks or, like it. He runs like it. And you can imagine if he wasn't so good at baseball and was still playing football, that might be his position. He's digging. He's had such an incredible baseball journey. He was a select festival athlete a couple of years back with Perfect Game. He's been a big part of the amateur game. He's been invited to so many different places and represented Chicago and done so with a lot of pride. He's made his parents proud, certainly. Raised a Cubs fan. So 
that's his team. We'll do it again. As Lombard about his favorite team, he'll make it clear. The Tigers. It's his dad, a longtime coach as well, and that's been a part of his journey. But Lombard says my favorite player, Brandon Crawford. Ah, that's a good one. He can he can pick it. See how I do that, folks, with Hunter? Gets me excited. Two and two the count. Bounces that one foul. Well, none of us know him as well as you. You grinded with him. You flew on planes with him and ate meals with him and celebrated with him. Listen, Brendan Crawford is captain consistent. He, he's just the same. He's neutral. He's professional. He gets his work done. And he takes grounders like it's the game seven of the World Series every single day. He hasn't ever stopped doing that. It's remarkable. If you like Brendan Crawford, you want to be like him? Practice consistently. Two and two the count. Into the glove it goes and down he goes on strikes. Lombard with a strikeout that time. And and right here he was getting fouled off and fouled off and fouled off and now he just elevates a little bit more and get up by those eyes. You, you can't really do much with this pitch. And that beats him. Making Winslow with an opportunity to hit now. He is out of Hertford, North Carolina. And is a Duke commit. Catcher and an outfielder. As he takes a pitch that cuts off the outside part of the plate. This young man, the son of Allison and Leary Winslow. And the brother to Nixon. Yeah, and Win Winslow had a great PG National. He's been known as one of the best defensive catchers in the country for some time. But, but went yard at Tropicana Field, and that kind of sealed his spot in this All-American Classic. So there's some offensive potential there, but already a great defensive player. Cooper Pratt out of Mississippi ranging around defensively out there at short as that one misses outside. Well, there's one thing we've seen from Keenan that we also saw from Xander Muth and they both have the same arm slot that that mid three quarters and both of them have really struggled to land that slider that breaking ball in the strike zone and it's it's kept Keenan th throwing a lot of fastballs where I think he would rather throw a breaking ball but he just doesn't have feel for it uh, yet in this game. Macon holds that bat high and the 2 0 is just up above the strike zone 3 and 0 the count to the young man that's been twice an all state catcher and twice a state champion pro 5 baseball academy. 4.5 GPA in the classroom and gives a ton of credit to his his dad. Blue collar work ethic he said that's what I've learned from my dad. His dad Leary. He said and I quote his hard work and success that's inspired me to work hard in everything I do whether that's in the classroom field or just in life I feel like I owe them for what they've sacrificed for me. Macon Winslow. That's amazing and he looks focused up there two time champ is what he is that's impressive. Spoils a, a pitch away. Just because he thought he had to didn't take the 3 1 hack I'm sure he wanted. Three and two the count a couple of outs perfect game all American classic. And last year the West team they didn't get a hit. So far this year the West team doesn't have a hit. The East has been pitching that's for sure. No, they've been pitching good defense. Captain obvious over here. <laughs> well done though. <laughs> that one is up and away. Hunter has a thing too. He's one of those guys that you know doesn't like mentioning things like that. He's wants to be careful about you know what you should and shouldn't talk about. I remember that from last year. <laughs> Reggie Sanders is going to visit. You know what I, I've been I've been schooled a little bit more <laughs> and about about what you should and shouldn't okay. talk about with, the, with are you talking about with regards to the no hitter no hitter. You got to tell the story is what I've been told from some of the, the, the different broadcasters that I've worked with and you know that's what's happening. The West is going on. How many innings now what, what, 16 15 16. and you know before the game and I shouldn't mention this but I thought the West was going to go out and just score some runs and get some hits after watching them hit for three days and looking at the names and everything. I thought oh, this is going to be different. David I think West is going to be cool. Tear. There's going to be so many homers on her. There's going to be 10 runs scored. <laughs> well the, the game's not over. We yeah have, yeah you're right. 
Meet Dylan Cup. He gets his call. The young, talented athlete. We've seen him already defensively out of Cedartown, Georgia. Plays for the famed East Cobb Astros. And Dylan Cup is a Mississippi State University commit. Well, that fire red hair, it's in a mohawk right now as he swings right through it. He's always had amazing hair, but he's always been a fun player to watch. Put him anywhere on the infield and he'll thrive. He's, he's, a, he's a Brandon Crawford type player, Hunter. He, he, he plays probably as much baseball as anybody in the country, and it's not spectacular. He doesn't have a spectacular tool, but he's so steady, so steady, comes out in, in every tournament, every game. He's the same guy, much like, much like Crawford. Hey, made a couple plays over there at second. Went right, went to his left, charged in on one. It's a Georgia guy. David bragging on Georgia earlier, if you're just joining us, moving up the ranks to 1 1. Bows it back. Danny Wexman, a little bit more on Dylan, huh? Yeah, of course. We saw him at the Select Fest. I asked him, how have you grown since then? He said, well, it's the intangibles. Those have gotten better. I've become a better leader. And I said, did you work on that consciously? And he said, yes, I did. I worked on my mental game as well. He said, I want to be a good player. I want to bring a good personality. I want to be a good teammate. And he, he said this line, guys, that's pretty good. He said, being a good baseball player is temporary. Being a good person is forever. How about that? Oh, I love that. That's outstanding. Good stuff, Danny. His guy's Austin Riley, by the way. That's his favorite player. Watches him like a hawk very closely. Couple of runners on. Looking to add on. Just one run on the board for the East squad. Well, he was on that one. That's interesting, the Austin Riley call. I mean, he, Austin Riley can absolutely hit. Talk about power. He was a perfect game All-American years ago. Austin Riley played in this game. David and I got a chance to call it. Now everybody knows who Austin Riley is. But I'd say the scouting community was 50-50 on whether he was going to be a pitcher or a player. Is that right? Oh, yes. No, he it was a 50-50 call on that. There's a number of big leaguers. He's not the only one. Verdugo with the Red Sox is another guy who we thought to be a 50-50 guy. But Austin Riley definitely. Breaking ball up was very effective as we've played six on to the seventh at the All-American Classic. Today's stat of the game presented by New Balance is West Coast 2021 to 2022. 15 consecutive innings without a hit. And maybe the stat is actually the East Coast pitching. 15 consecutive innings without giving up a hit. What do you have to say, David? I'd say I like the second half, and I think that stat, you read that stat right. It's the, uh, it's the, brilli it's the brilliance of the East pitching, and we'll see if Landon Marotis can add another hitless inning to it. That stat of the day brought to you by Perfect Game Cares. Visit them at perfectgamecares.org. Largo, Florida is the home of Landon Marotis. Rodas can play the infield and outfield, but he is here to pitch. North Carolina State commit. Rihanna and Pete are his parents. Dad played at St. Leo, played college baseball. This is a really good student, another 4 plus GPA, 4.21. He is a Max Scherzer fan. That's many, many lineup to watch and learn from Max Scherzer, who made his debut in this stadium as a Diamondback many years ago. Ryder Helfrick gets the call for the West squad. Maybe he breaks things up, guys. The Arkansas commit. Ryder drives that one towards center field. That one is touched. It's down. There is a hit, and it's for extra bases. The young man out of California in the third with the triple. No more, no hitter. It's a three-bagger for Ryder Helfrich. Wow, did he scold that ball. Listen, if all they needed to do was have me talk about how they hadn't gotten a hit, I would have done that 15 innings ago. But Ryder gets a fastball up and tattoos it. And there is nothing you can do in center for Justin Best, who just got out there, slips and falls, and uh, man, 
Turn those Jets on. You can gallop. Yeah, he's one of the strongest, strongest hitters, right-handed hitters in the class, and he got he got the pitch that he wanted. Boy, that was nice to see. Nice to see for any number of reasons. I see you taking a little breath of fresh air, David. It's the dam is broken. <laughs> that is our G right, form on, play Russ. of the game. Our G form play of the game, and that one, of course, the most comfortable protective guards in all of baseball. G form, go next level. Helfrick with the triple. Cooper Pratt's out of Oxford, Mississippi. He is an old Miss commit. His brother plays at BYU. His uncle coaches at BYU. Brand new head coach there. Cooper Pratt. Mom is Heidi, a family physician. Dad is Russell, who played college baseball as well. And it's obvious from the way Cooper Pratt plays the game that he has a lot of baseball in his background. He's a, a very, very sound fundamental player. He's still growing into his body, 6'4", but he's looking like he can stay in the middle of the infield on defense. But he's such a strong fundamental athlete, baseball player. His mom did play college softball at Nova Southeastern, was twice an All-American. Mom could hit. Was a great hitter and a middle infielder. Son, a great hitter and a middle infielder. A check swing. It's misplayed. Nice recovery. Not able to turn it into an out. That was a really nice effort to recover by Morotas as he stepped on the bag and a run scores. We're tied at one. It looks like he was trying, he was thinking about getting the out at, at home. Pretty close play over here as well. Actually, pretty nice bounce by Landon to get over. Just gets misses getting the out. He got a tie ball game. West is on the board. Hazan Zanatello out of Florissant, Missouri. USA Prime National. This is a young man that we've enjoyed getting to know him and his family. His dad is Zach, his mom is Tamika. He's the MVP of the MLB develops. Gathering in Vero Beach, Florida. He's played well with breakthrough series. This is a great student as well. What do you have for us on him, David? Well, the first thing that's most impressive is having seen him around all week. He's another of these players who has a perpetual smile. You can tell it's a it's a happy, happy personality. But there's also lots of tools. You look at that long, lean body. A lot of scouts think he's going to end up in center field. That's his eventual destination because it's he's not going to lose his speed. And, and it's such a rangy build and uh, you know just a great all around athlete. Well he made that nice play over at third as well just you know kind of hot shot stabbed at it stayed with it made a nice calm throw. Interesting they think he's going to turn into a center fielder. Yeah, Impressive. He's a 6 4 runner. You know, you look at that build. It's a, it's that long lean build. I it, I don't think he's going to add a lot of bulk to him. The interesting thing is he's always played third base, and I've always wondered who plays shortstop on a team with an athlete like that. Who you think he everywhere in high school in the country he'd be playing shortstop, but he's always been a third baseman. So that play he made there, you know, certainly was, you know, something he's probably made before. Prospect for sure as he draws a walk. The young man who's a huge Dodgers fan, a Mookie Betts fan, heads to first base. The let's go West sign there. Zanatello. What's interesting is he's kept himself wide open with options. Most of these players, as a matter of fact, almost all of them are committed. He's not. I'm sure he's a college coach's dream as he makes his decision, like Tamar Johnson. The top player in the country last year waited till the very last minute to commit to ASU. Too big of a land, you'd have to be farther that's away. The, that's unusual. I was just working on some stuff today for the 2025 class, and all the, so many of them were committed already from two years beyond these kids, two years younger. This is Carl Schmidt. Schmidt, he's out of Petaluma, California. He's a Texas A&M commit. This is another one that's a middle infielder but can play anywhere. He hugs the line with that one, but it's foul. Hunter, when you were 17 years old, what who was your favorite player? We hear a lot of the Mookie Betts and and Scherzers and and stuff. Who was your favorite player? I like Darren Erstead and Jim Tomey. Yeah, Darren Erstead because he dove head first into walls and just played like a wild animal, and and Tomey because he just hit bombs. Those are two really good ones, Hunter. As that one's into the catcher's mitt. 
I was a 6'4 punch at Judy. Uh, my, my, my college coach had to teach me. He's like, you're 6'4. We need you to start driving the ball a little bit. <laughs> Into the catcher's minute goes, and Schmidt goes down on strikes that time. That's a big strikeout for Landon right there to kind of slow down this uh, this attack of the West Coast. Brandon Winoker gets the call now of the West squad. This is his opportunity out of Huntington Beach, California. Brandon's at Edison High School. As he takes just off the plate. There's quite a few from Huntington Beach, California. And the, the OC is represented yeah. well this year. Yeah, this has been a big year for the state of California. There, in general, there are 15 players here from California, nine from, from Southern California, six from Northern California. But, uh, and of course, that reflects like UCLA's numbers. We saw earlier they had six commits in this game. Brandon is the son of Christine and Keith, and his dad a decathlete at San Francisco State. Two times he was all-conference. Mom, a hurdler at UC Irvine. Breaking ball, that is a dandy. Rodas, a big Rays fan. I was watching his Rays. I'm sure they love watching that when they scout him. Got on the side of that one a little bit, and it's outside. Well, Winokur was very impressive in batting practice the other day. There's an area above a Dick Sporting Goods sign just to the left of the 413 sign. He hit it probably 40 feet up above that 413 sign. So probably a five, 450 shot at least. Nice quick turn, looking to turn two, and they do it beautifully. Wow, that was fun to watch. Holcomb, the big corner infielder, was playing in the middle of the infield. Braden, I'll flip it. Antonio, turn it, baby. And he did. My daddy taught me to love and respect catchers. Well, this is a good one. A really good catcher, and he was the home run champion as well earlier. That's out of Huntington Beach High School. It felt like, Hunter, there were like six overtimes in this one. They kept tying and tying. It really was. It was like the third overtime, and he just kept hitting homers, you know? You all oh, more BP on the big league field. Let's get it. And here we're about to watch the, the winning one, and Wes gets pretty pumped. Or maybe we're just going to watch a couple of them. He, he got real comfortable in that rocking chair of hitting homers, didn't he? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Wiffle ball, you know, that's all. That's what he said. He's just playing. With, I take my wiffle ball swing, and then I, I hit eight home runs. <laughs> my goodness, that's MLB The Show stuff right there. A quality young man, a good high character. They love him at Huntington Beach High School. Certainly excited to see what the future holds. Meet Zane Adams. He's out of Porter, Texas. He plays for the Banditos Scout Team. That's a famed travel ball group. He's at Porter High School, and he is a commit to play for the University of Alabama, the Crimson Tide. Amanda and Derek are his parents, and he is one of four at home. As a matter of fact, Addison is 13, Pierce is 10, and Scotland is four, who he called in his questionnaire, our family surprise. So the young four-year-old at home, let's watch Adams go to work. Bryce Eldridge, a tall, ranging athlete who's also a pitcher. We'll see him pitch a little bit later. Hits it a mile high to left. The Vienna, Virginia native went after the first pitch. Well, Hunter, you mentioned the word projectable earlier. It's usually something I use frequently during a broadcast, but some of these, some of these, these players are already big and strong and everything. Adams is a classic projection guy who's just getting there. He's improved so much in the last year, but still 6'4", 185 pounds. And, I like the delivery, lots of energy uh, in it. He's like, yeah, he's bouncing around. Yeah. It's like, it, it's definitely got some antics here. And he fires a fastball into Adrian Santana. Proud of his Cuban heritage. Osmani and Barbara, his parents. Mom is a teacher. Dad played in the Indians organization for a couple of years and played pretty darn well. As that one misses just a little bit off home plate. Adrian is out of a Doral Academy charter in Miami, and he's a Miami commit. He's just turned 17 years old. And we've certainly seen his defensive chops, both on a long ranging catch of a foul ball and a hard ground ball up the middle. Andrew Wiggins, 
Indiana native makes the play for out number two in this inning. So we haven't seen Adams curveball yet. Three, three pitches, two outs. But you see that that high release point he has. And we've seen a lot of that mid three quarter stuff so far. This is a true like over the top. And when he gets on top of that breaking ball, it's a, it's a thing to behold. And I hope hope we see one here to this hitter. Uh, this, this is Andrew Duncan. This hitter. He's out of Dunedin, Florida. He's a Florida State University commit. His mom is Tamar. His dad is Joseph. And Dynamics at times challenging for Andrew and he is an optimistic energetic young man that has made the most of it. Breaking ball and that one's diving down and off the plate. He, he says look my family's the reason I get up every day. It's been a divided family for many years in his youth. He said I hope I can make it so I can pull all of us back together. Really noble goals and a good high character man as that one bounces in there. That's definitely a powerful purpose and uh, you know when you have purpose it can take you pretty far and just with Zane Adams it's like if you mix the bunny rabbit with Barry Zito. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. It's got the hair too. Into the catcher's minute it goes two and two the count. You talk about that powerful purpose and why you do things and so much optimism. With challenges younger in life. And 2 2. Looked like he went on that breaking ball. You were talking about the breaking ball, David. It's a good one. A real good one. That's strike three. Wow. That was an inning, young man. Mr. Adams. Parents Derek and Amanda, I'm sure they loved what they saw there. Boy, incredible stuff we have seen thus far. This is our launch hydrate game summary. Active on the base pads, even if you're a big fella like Braden Holcomb standing 6'5. Vanderbilt awaits his arrival. Come on down, and he scores. And then finally, finally they got off the Schneid after being no hit last year. Ryder Helfrick blasting that ball to center field. A little roller. That's all it took. A swinging bunt. And we are tied at one. That is where we stand. The launch hydrate. Game summary. Electrolytes a brand new way to stay sharp. Points that thirst. This is Josh Noth. He is from Long Island, Medford, New York, and he certainly plays and pitches to honor his dad, Carl, who has had very challenging health-wise the last couple of years. He was honored by his mates was Josh last night as they stood in support of him to let him know that we're thinking of your dad we're praying for your dad we're here for your dad as he fires the first one to T.J. Pompey and it's popped foul but Josh is a talented pitcher with a big breaking ball and as his dad looks to get back to health he's in rehabilitation came off some help breathing from a tracheotomy gosh man it's it's just a lot for a young man to deal with but David he's. Led by mom Debbie too right now. His aunt and uncle have been traveling him around. And that it didn't get all the way there, but that's his calling card—a good breaking ball, right? Yeah, he's an outstanding breaking ball, and most importantly, it's a breaking ball that he throws for strikes. This is a young man who, who out on Long Island, same school by the way that uh, Marcus Stroman went to. It, he had nine, I believe, it was 94 strikeouts and three walks this spring. So he's a strike thrower with a, a swing and miss pitch in that in that nasty curveball. T.J. Pompey is out of Capel, Texas. He's a Texas Tech commit. He is his foe. Tim and Nikki, his parents, originally from Kalamazoo, his mom and dad. When they grew up in Kalamazoo, mom Nikki, she was a classmate of Derek Jeter's. And that is Mr. Pompey's hero. That's who he learns from, looked up to, and that's why he plays in the middle of the infield. Crossed him up. Yikes. Well, you don't want to be crossed up with a guy with a breaking ball like that. Yeah, that doesn't look like that felt very good. And nobody on base, but somehow still got crossed up, and he's like, oh. <laughs> I hope that didn't catch his hand, because that's baseballs are a lot harder than they look on TV. It's making Winslow. They'll make sure they get everything set. Quick reminder, the bases are empty. Just, I'd go with the good old fashioned one two wiggle. <laughs> I mean the bases I, are empty. That, that's why when you get crossed up with the bases empty it's a little that's a little confusing.
Oh, fires that one to the backstop. That one sails up and inside. He loses command that time. And now the bases are not empty. And another chance for Roman Martin to hit. Hit by a pitch earlier in this game. Gets an opportunity now to go to work. Run on the move. Throw down. Beautiful throw right on top of the bag. Macon Winslow shotgun. Yeah, I mentioned earlier he's one of the top catch defensive catchers in the country. He gets a chance to prove it there. Right on the bag. Macon's throws like bacon taste, baby. Making some bacon. Frying them up. There's a there's a there's a minor league team, right? Like called the Macon Bacons. There is. <laughs> yes, there is. There is. But that was a that throw was on the money. The 1 1. Breaking ball over the inside corner to Roman Martin. Kind of a tough place to be in where you got hit by a pitch your first at bat. The last pitch was behind the batter before him. <laughs> See how you got to be tough, Roman. Well, that is a good breaking ball, David. This is a pitcher, too, that's. Wide open. He's available. Had a recent decommitment. He's trying to decide exactly where he wants to go. All the while dealing with some challenges at home as his dad tries to fight back to health. Inside corner. That one grabbed just a piece of home plate. That's strike three. And I'd like to hear Charles Johnson's comments about how how Winslow framed that. He was very much on the side of the ball from that first look at it. Yep. Yeah, he brought that one back a little bit, and that's a, maybe the, a benefit of a good call there for, for Noth. So, front door slider. We get to see Dylan Head hit again. Fastball blazes over the outside corner at 93 miles an hour. Maybe there's plenty of giddy up in that right arm to go with that breaking ball. That breaking ball is fouled off at home plate. 0 and 2 the count. This gifted and pure hitter. D smooth as his mates call it. Smooth. Slightly open stance. The 0 2 breaking ball went around. Nice job blocking it up behind home plate. Josh Noth outstanding. A hammer on the mound, a strong inning. Hey, Carl. Hey, Dad. That one was for you. Hey, welcome back. We're all tied up at Chase Field. And look who I found, Luis Gonzalez, 2001 World Series hero, Major League veteran. How excited were you to have the All-American game back at Chase? Well, this is a great opportunity for us to showcase not only our city, but to have these great players come into Arizona and be a part of this special special week that we have every year for the All-American game. You are a dad. Your son has come through Perfect Game, but you are still here. You spend so much time with this organization. Why is it so important for you to be here? I love it because these are the future of Major League Baseball, all these kids that are out here playing, whether they go to college before they make it to that next level, or a lot of these guys are going to be number one picks coming up in the draft. So uh, it's an exciting time, not only for the players, but for their families and everybody. It's a huge journey to get them to that next level. There's a lot of young guys out here. We have a, a lot of young guys in the dugout, too, getting to be around these future big leaguers. What do you know about these guys that makes you feel confident in the future of the game? Well, I mean, they know how to play the game, and we always try to surround them with some great people, good coaches, and some former major league guys that have been around the game and know how to talk to them and and help them understand what it takes to get to that next level but these guys are way more advanced than they were when guys like myself Hunter Pence and Trevor Hoffman all these guys were playing the game so uh, it's an exciting time for for baseball in itself you're seeing so many younger players right now getting to the major leagues a lot quicker Luis thank you so much you got it Darren thank you Danny Justin best digs in and works a couple of pitches Justin Lee is on the mound, Southern California native. He is a UCLA commit, as that one just missed the inside corner. 
best Philly scout team is travel team of Florida State University commit Kathy and Rick are his parents. Dad retired military and a successful high school baseball coach. He lifts that one to the left side. A trio from the West squad come together and it's about four rows back. David his name is Justin Lee out there who is he as a pitcher why is he here. Well Justin Lee came into the PG National as one of those guys that we weren't even thinking about as an All American he left as the 30th ranked player in the country very live right arms was up to 95 in Tropicana but he throws a slider and he's just developing a split finger we saw one earlier in this at bat that has a chance to be a really really special pitch and you don't say split finger and high school all American very often but he's got a dandy if he can throw it for strikes. At Notre Dame High School his head coach Justin Lee. Is Tom Dill. Meanwhile best rolls that one foul off the facing of the dugout and. Justin Best, his swing, that's a smooth swing right there. He's got some nice hands. Almost, I hate to compare anyone. I mean, he doesn't have the angle of Griffey, but he's got that smooth lefty stroke. Yeah, and, and that angle, the angle on his swing is is something I, I have a little bit concerned, but it, the smoothness, you're right, you hit that one right on the head. So JB draws the walk and he will head to first. That was that was a as good a, a take as you can get. That that pitch from Lee was borderline and could have gone either way. That call. Isaiah Drake gets a chance to hit now for the first time. The East Cobb Astro team member from Westlake High School in Atlanta, Georgia. Janet and William, his parents, as that one sails high. You're familiar with the, the football name Kenyon Drake. Successful. That's a, that's a family member. Great athleticism in this family. Best took off. A rundown is on. In the end, with the tag, that's an out. Carl Schmidt was Johnny on the spot to apply the final tag. And yeah. Just probably trying to get a little too aggressive here, all star game type scenario. And man, a lot of pickoffs for, you know, the PG All American game. They're holding runners now in high school. And like Luis Gonzalez said, these kids are a lot more polished than we used to be back in the day. Isaiah thought about chasing that one. He didn't go around upon appeal. Massive Braves fan. Not to be a Braves fan if you're in the state lines of Georgia, as that one is way inside off the plate. Joanne and Jay are the parents of Justin Lee. That one loose. Good tail to it at 92. Eight, that's the 82. Was that the split right there? I think that was that was from the last pitch. I oh, think okay. that, was a, that was a 92. Oh, that was a 92. Right. All right. But the pitch before, yes, that was. That did have some movement though. Well, he loves watching Shohei Otani pitch. He shared that with us, though he's a Dodgers fan, and it may not be a better split right now than Shohei's. Number 37. Alfonso Rosario. And now Alfonso Rosario. It's slightly open stance as that one skips on by. Ready Helf, Ryder Helfrick will go get that baseball, get it right back to Lee. We saw Rosario fly deep to right field and also walk in this game. I think that was a slider that just uh, Helfrich underestimated the break a little bit. 
Danny what do you have for us on Justin and a split fingered fastball. Yeah I had to talk to him earlier in the week because I saw David's scouting report. He told me that he threw it for the first time a week before national and he wanted to add a third pitch. He said my changeup just wasn't working for me. He watched Otani. You guys mentioned it. he said I watched a video of him. I learned the grip all I held it all day long and he said at national he held his fingers outside the seams and now he's got his index finger on a seam and his middle finger is in between on the middle of the ball. He said that gives him more control now. David you can speak to this more. I don't know if we're seeing it exactly right now maybe a little more adrenaline but he's been working on yeah, that. He's split thrown finger. it a couple times in really nice locations so far. You can see that in his grip there and I think a lot of people who throw a lot of splits like an Otani put it in the in their glove for in sure. the split grip and then change because it it's some a way you could tip a pitch but he's in that split grip right there and let's see what we see on this pitch. That's it. That's a split fingered fastball. Nice nice job by a production team outstanding and David Danny Hunter it's incredible stuff. Yeah right there you got the split yeah, grip. We had a good yeah, angle at it and it did exactly what you want to do with your split. You get looks like a fastball for a strike and then dives into the dirt gets the chase. You also had a nice play by the catcher blocking that ball. Yeah. Helfrick. Runner on second base. A speedy runner on second base but Helfrick just deadened it right in front of him just like uh, just like he thought. A chance to hit for Itsuki Takemoto who pitched and struck out six the other night. This talented athlete who passed on a chance to play on the 18 new national team for Japan because he wanted to play in this game. Wakayama in Japan and he has been a part of everything these players have done. The food lines the workouts the ping pong. As he swings right through that one 0 and 2 the count and David you told us a little bit about who he was as a pitcher which was impressive. Yeah a pitcher but he wants he wants to come to the United States and be a two way player. He loves hitting he's taking bat, part in all the batting practices but the emphasis there is he wants to come to the United States and go to college here play baseball here different than virtually every other Japanese player you'll find. Fun matchup that time fun to see Takemoto hit after he pitched so effectively the other night. Justin Lee and his splitter. Ooh. 2022 Perfect Game All American Classic is brought to you by Oakley. Be who you are. Rawlings, the number one glove of pro players, the official baseball glove of Major League Baseball. PG Cares, grow the game. By G Form, the most comfortable protective guards in all of baseball because the best never settle for less. The G Form, go for next level. Leaf, the exclusive trading card partner of Perfect Game. And by New Balance. Proud partner of the perfect game, All American Classic. Danny Wuxelman, David Ronsley, Hunter Pence. My name is Darren Sutton. This is Bryce Eldridge. We saw him hit earlier. A right handed pitcher and a left handed hitter and an Alabama commit. And a young man out of Vienna, Virginia. He is the son of Beth and Ben. And he is the younger brother of Ben the Third. This is a tall, tall athlete. And athlete's the key word. He's lean, he's lanky. Who is he as a pitcher? As a pitcher, he's a, a, it starts with the athleticism. He's six seven, but he's a he's a command guy. He's been up to 95, but he's a big, big strike thrower. Um, a guy who's going to come into this th this game and continue what we've seen so far for eight innings, throw strikes, throw especially fastball strikes, and make the hitters hit it. Zion Rose is his battery mate. He will trot out the Chicagoan to have a conversation, introduce himself. And Andrew Wiggins will hit first. Wiggins has grounded out a couple of times. Wiggins, 17 years old, ran a 6660 at National. He's had some really good tournaments along the way. He was amazing this summer at the East Cop Complex just outside of Atlanta. Had a 684 on base in that event for the Indiana Bulls. 1 0 the count to Wiggins as the fastball misses up and away. David talked about his stock going up, the character that he has. Told you about the student and the musician that he is. 
I'm not quite sure what to make of the hat. I just don't know what to do with it. I'm not sure what to make of Trey Phelps. You think he's shy? I think. <laughs> I think, I think he's enjoying life a, a lot. Heck yeah. I like it. Now, Eldridge, I don't, he, he has so much Grilly vibes. Jason Grilly, he's got the hair, the, you know, the, the sweet mustache, the body type. Sliders in 95. That's what grilled cheese That's does. It was funny, he came in, Hunter, for his interviews the other day, and our entire team does such a great job, and I popped my head in. That's not a bad comp right there. Joe Dirte. And I said, wait, who let the 31 year old middle reliever in the big leagues <laughs> into this room? He has that vibe. He definitely has reliever high stepping right there a little bit, too. The antics of a, of a 30 year old middle reliever. <laughs> and it's just the stash, too. I mean, the stash, I think, is thought, OK, Eldridge, you'll have the seventh tonight in this triple A game. I mean, it just he looks older than he is. It's fun. Fastball over the outside corner, and it's easy. That's an easy 94. It really is. It, and, he, and, and you see him, you know, kind of high step after he throws it. And that, that, wow, that took off a little late run, and it was a four seamer running. Yeah, and the thing was, he just missed with the pitch before in almost the same place. And he said, I thought that was a strike. I'm going to go back and throw it there again and see if I can get it. Trent Caraway wags that bat as he awaits a breaking ball to miss just off the plate. That's all Caraway has seen tonight is breaking balls. He took the three big hacks at breaking balls his last time up off Peterson. There it is. Knuckles right in and off the plate. That bore right in. Well, he, he kept getting the slider, slider, sliders. The front hips a little happy. And then he got froze by the fastball, and right there he got he got his heater finally. French grandfather Robert Whitey Caraway played in the American League in the 30s, a pitcher and a hitter. He loves the stories about his grandfather. As there's a a baseball with tilt over the outside corner. Caraway, a four year starter, which means at a private school, he started starting in eighth grade. I always think there's a unique confidence you have to have if you are at the school and not at a public school where you can move on up and play in the varsity team as an eighth grader. You have to carry yourself a lot of confidence around those seniors, albeit respect them at the same time. So there's some, probably some seniors who think they should be playing your position, too. Who is this eighth grader? Now they're watching him drive this ball into center field. That one put away out there by Walker Jenkins. Those same seniors are watching him in the All-American Classic right now in their that's third year of college. That's why. That's why, he, that's why he didn't start. Here's Nolan Stevens. Dad a college golfer at Delta College. Mom a college softball player. Michael and Brooke are his parents, by the way. As that one misses up and away. Steven's a player that can impact a game both sides as well. A left handed pitcher that he doesn't want to stop pitching. He enjoys it. Plays for Alpha Prime, his travel team. As he takes high 2 0 with the count. And if he threw in this game, he he would not be out of place because he was 90 93 at, at at PG National. His all state status is I think as much on his his pitching as is his hitting. Broke his bat, but does that bat die happy? It does not. Dylan Cup says, "Uh uh, you lost your bat and you lost the base hit." David Ronsley, Hunter Pence, we want drama. So to the bottom of the ninth we go. Our Dick Sporting Goods players of the game, Ryder Helfrick, who tripled, has done a nice job behind the plate, and scored the lone run for the West. That was the first hit for the West. Lone hit for the West, and Braden Holcomb, a big, talented, physical presence. Man who plays for Power Baseball, a couple of singles and a run. Meet Cole Schoenwetter, this young man from Santa Barbara, California. 
His commitment is right there at home. He's a UC Santa Barbara commit. Plays for Trotsky National. Abe Ruiz, his travel coach. Ned is dad. Ali is mom. And Luca is his older sister. David, why is he here? Well, he's one of the most polished pitchers in this 2023 class. You're not going to see the 95s or 96s. I expect you would, won't, but you'll see three pitches, 91, 94 on the fastball. His swing and miss pitch is a big breaking mid 70s curveball. That one breaks too much. My wrist is too big. Fastball right down the middle at 94 miles an hour against Dylan Cup. First team All State competitor, both his sophomore and his junior year in Georgia. The breaking ball down off the end of the bat, up the ladder, unable to make the play to haul it in that time. It's about as high as you can go in a good effort. But there's the winning run out there at first here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nice job of hitting by Cup. He got that big curveball and he stayed back on it and didn't try to do too much. As tall as he can go, TJ Pompey. And Dylan Cup has been in the middle of everything, playing defense, sneaking a leadoff knock in the bottom of the ninth. Adrian Santana takes a fastball that is high. Santana, pretty good basketball player, pretty good all around athlete as well. Interesting third baseman playing in as if a bunting situation, maybe. Would you bunt in an All-American game, even if it's the bomb of the night? I don't think you do. I don't think so. I think these kids want to win, though. I know they want to win. They also, this is your chance to shine. I don't think you're bunting in the All-American Classic. That was popped up foul. Rattles around over there. Santana out of Hialeah, Florida. In 110 games in his perfect game career, he's got a 483 on base percentage. A bunch of walks, a bunch of hits. Showed well at the Worldwood Bat Association World Championship in Jupiter last year. And we've seen a couple double plays, but I would bet Santana is the farthest thing from a candidate is his speed coming from the left side. Folks, David's talking about that because he ran a 6 1 6 60 at PG National. And coming from the left side. Well, now you're talking about a 6 1. <laughs> Maybe you do drop a bunt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you're bunting for a hit. You show off the speed. Instead. No showing off, it's showing wetter. As he blows <laughs> him away with the fastball, he says, I'm, I'm not having any of it. Good pitch. And he's challenging with the heater. He's not shy of letting it rip right down the middle. I'm going to show you that I got the cheddar biscuit. Yeah, I think he saw in that first fastball that Santana was a little bit behind it and said, hey, I'll keep throwing it if you uh, you have to prove to me you can hit it. David, you told us he wasn't going to be pumping the high 90s. He's up in the 94. It looks like it, he's throwing fuzz up there. He's a 91, 94 guy. And tonight, that's not 91, 94 isn't fuzz tonight. Uh, yeah, there's been some, some 94 <laughs> fuzzies. <laughs> but it's life and it's thrown to spots. This big Cubs fan working against Macon Winslow, and it's outside and off the plate. A couple of times we've seen the Duke commit Winslow. Winslow a couple of innings ago was dynamic threw out a runner blocked up a drop third strike only to turn it into an out at first base he had a heck of a defensive inning love when that happens I think more than anything David because you're not catching your regular pitchers and that's a challenge for these guys and you've seen one or two on the on the miscommunication but as much you've never seen that especially the, the like a split finger or a slider or a, you know one of their nasty pitches you just haven't seen it move before and it's you're trying to defend yourself as much as catch the pitch. Nice job showing that pitch as a strike. Blake Mitchell working behind home plate. There's, there's some good lettuce coming out from underneath that hat too. Some good hair there. Some Santa Barbara Barbara surfer vibes. Yes. 
Into the catch as minute goes, three and two. Danny, what, what else do we know about Sean Wetter? Yeah, well, first of all, that's bleached hair, just to let you know. That Shocker. happened this summer. Yeah, that <laughs> happened that. this summer. Had to ask him about it. <laughs> it was out of a box. He said, I might take it more seriously, though, and get it for real done later this year. So that's bleached hair. But I did ask him about his pitching. He told me he actually caught until he was 10 years old. At 11, his team was out of pitchers, so he had to take them out. He said he fell in love with pitching. The changeup last pitch he learned, his favorite, you guys were laughing, is his knuckle curve. He said, it's called a slider in the books, in the write-ups, he said, but it's not. It's a knuckle curve. Thank you, D. That's a good fastball over the outside corner, and a nice job being shown by Blake Mitchell again. Here's Andrew Duncan again. Oh my, that is a good looking curveball there. 76 miles an hour, high spin to it. Just dumped right in there for a strike. Another one. I have a hard time believing that that gets called a slider. I, I, <laughs> it's like as a 12-6 uh, or Ruski. Not on any report I've ever written has it been called a slider. But he had, he pitched probably the, mo the best game of the year on the WWBA circuit this year. He had a complete game one hitter in the playoffs of the 17U National Championships against a really, really tough team. Struck out 17 no walks. 17? I believe eight, eight of the 17 were on, on breaking balls, on curve balls. His average fastball this year has been 92. The average curveball, 74 miles an hour. That's quite a differential. It's fun to watch him pitch because that plays, right? If you can spin that breaking ball, Hunter, like he did before, then that plays even more. Every, he hasn't thrown a fastball anywhere near the middle of the plate. And it was nice seeing that because he came in with intent. But it's been corner, corner, corner with every one of those fastballs. And I want to get a closer look. If he doesn't slow his body down with that that speed differential, that it really plays. Runner takes off, swung right through it. That's strike three. So the inning will come to an end. We're going to play one extra inning. Struck out the side. Strong. Santa Barbara strong. Cole Schoenwetter. Ethan McIlvain pitched a couple of nights ago in the exhibition. Thought that might be the only work he would do. Instead, Big Mac gets the call. He's out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. He plays for the Midland Redskins, his travel team. This talented left-handed pitcher is a Vanderbilt commit, the son of Rachel and Chris. He has had a, a quite a journey, winning a gold medal as a 15-year-old player. He was a Mr. Baseball finalist last year in the state of Tennessee. And in his high school season this year, tossed a perfect game. This is quite an honor to get called back to pitch in this game too. Ethan McElbain. Who is he, D? Well, he's the, the, the pitching the perfect game doesn't come as a surprise to me because he's a strike thrower. We touched a bit on his performance in the uh, the scrimmage a couple days ago, which was very consistent with that. But 90 to 93, he hit a 95 in the scrimmage game, throws his breaking ball for strikes, and it's a baseball family. His brother was an eighth, was an eighth round draft pick out of Vanderbilt, um, I believe, last year. So, so there's pitching genes in the family. I'm sure they're watching right now and proud to see younger brother on the mound and not really expecting to because it used to be last year was the first year that we picked players to name them all Americans to throw in the scrimmage. This wasn't an anticipated situation. And so here he is and the bases are loaded one out. Those are perfect game extra inning rules. You think it's crazy in the big leagues. How about the PG world bases full one out Ryder Helfrich who tripled earlier in this game to break up the no hitter for the West team digs in Mr. McIlvain you signed up for this. He said wait a minute. There's three runners out here. It's time to go to work. Here we go into the 10th inning at the perfect game all American classic Ryder from Discovery Bay California. And he goes to work. It's a base hit into left field. Turn that one around one. And two runs score with a head first slide. Helfrich with the triple and now a double. Both baseballs scalded. The West has two hits and we're going on our 18th-ish inning, 19th-ish inning, and they have both been Ryder Helfrich. The West Coast offense runs through him and just hesitation at none, gets a fastball, 
right on it, finds the hole, but that was a barrel, two RBIs. And look at this slide into home. <laughs> That was not. I mean, that that was not. Go. That's not Trey Turner. That's going Maxwell to the Clark, baby. That was not Trey Turner smooth. <laughs> no. That was football, Maxwell. Yes. Here is Cooper Pratt from Oxford, Mississippi. The old Miss commit. Infield in. That one kicks a little bit away, but not far enough. By the way, the Arizona Diamondbacks, the great hosts of this game, have landed back in the state of Arizona. And when you land in your home state, you keep your cars at your home ballpark. And the Diamondbacks are coming and going through this ballpark right now as this game is being played. As I understand it, as that's a fair ball on the move, Cooper Pratt. They're smiling in Oxford, Mississippi. He plates a pair. Cooper with a double. Also smiling in the West dugout, that's for sure. Well, the offense is coming alive. <laughs> and they're jumping out to a four-run lead. Fastball inside. He shoots it down the line just there. And they're moving. I have to one is the score. West team saying we just needed you to load the bases yeah, for load us. The bases. <laughs> now we'll hit like base runners. 5-1 the score. Nazan Zanatello, the native of Missouri. But as I understand it, to finish the thought, Alec Thomas, perfect game All-American a couple of years ago out of Chicago, the center fielder for the Diamondbacks, is down there somewhere or somewhere in the building and may present an award at the end of this game and join Gonzo out there. That'd be cool. Have an active big leaguer come join in the fun. There's no, there's no doubt about it. That'd be cool. And watching Alec Thomas play defense is, is is one of the greatest gifts a baseball fan could get. Throw him out there, baby. <laughs> it feels like it was yesterday he was out there, doesn't it, David? Oh yes. That Alec was deciding, am I going to go to play football at TCU? Am I going <laughs> to? Well, the Diamondbacks solved that problem by selecting him high and changing his life, and he's kind of stolen that spot. There, there he, he is. is. Hey, Alec. That to me makes a huge statement Two two fronts number one kind of the perfect game memories and number two the Diamondbacks the relationship the way that they've hosted this event that player being there makes that that's a huge statement on two fronts because I'm sure he'd like to go home and rest baseball players like baseball and Alec Thomas is a baseball player that can't get enough breaking ball and a pretty pitch from McIlvain. That's a great statement, Hunter. Baseball players like baseball. He's a grinder, Alec. McElvain a little upset, but gets a good pitch right here. Nice little curveball. I'm wondering, Zion Rose goes to the same high school that Alec Thomas went to, correct? I believe so. I wonder if they played together. Maybe when Thomas was a senior and Rose was a freshman. Maybe for five minutes, right? Yeah. That, that had to be the case. Alec twice this year in anticipation of this game has been a guest once in person and once remotely on our weekly syndicated TV show. So he's been all in on this event from the get go. Look out back there. Oh boy. That, what did that get one of our fine shooters. Can we get a thumbs up? He's OK. Taylor, He's Taylor. a gamer. Yes. Yeah. Let's go. It's Taylor. Is that all you got? Oh, man, I hope he's all right. Carl Schmidt got a little Eloy Jimenez vibe, this batting stance. Breaking ball for a strike. Our production team, our creative shooters, so gifted. Let's hope he's OK. Here's Alec looking on. Swing and a miss. That's good stuff. Look, he came in after pitching a couple of nights ago. Had to deal with the bases loaded. Had some strong moments out there. Oakley player spotlight. Oakley, be who you are. Incredible job by Ryder Helfrich. He was being exactly who he wanted to be, Hunter, breaking up a no-hitter. 
And then pitching in a double to add on later in the game. I mean, he got two big barrels, the line drive to center for the triple, and then the shot in the, in the hole, in the six hole, to drive in two. The West offense rides through Ryder. Well said by I you. I didn't do that on purpose. Well said it's, by it, you. It was it didn't really make sense either, but we'll take it. Here's Cal Randall, huh? Yes, it is. Cal pitched a couple of nights ago. He's from Discovery Bay, California. Jeff Petty is the head coach of the Canes national team. That's where he does his work with Travel Ball, the UCLA commit, and the son of Cindy and Jay. As he talks things over. Dad played college football at Boise State. High leg kick, whippy near side arm slot, 90 to 93 when he's right. He has touched 96 miles an hour in his lifetime. And although they go to different high schools, Randall and Ryder Helfrich, both from Discovery Bay, California. So they, I no doubt, played together in Little League or somewhere back in the day. For the tall guy, the release point seems kind of low. Pretty, pretty funky angle. Best into the catcher's mid it goes. You see him really get into the legs, and it's like he's he's this big tall guy, but he gets down in there before he releases his pitch. Bouncing ball out towards short. There's one on to first. Oh, what a pick. That would have ended it. But a run scores instead. Eric Bitanti picking one right off the dirt. Yeah, and I think this is the first out of the inning right here. Second out of the inning. Oh, second out of the inning. Not bad. Yeah, the base is loaded one out. The craziness of oh, how it starts. OK, <laughs> that's where I got confused. I was like, OK, what? <laughs> That's a, bad. that's a second nice play that Batanti has made at first base. He had a, a real nice stretch on a play earlier, and I'm wondering whether he's ever played first base before, being a, a shortstop, albeit a 6'5 shortstop. Figure it out on the fly. <laughs> at just be an athlete. Roman Martin was the man who tried to turn it over around the second base bag. This West team at Perfect Games All-American Classic, they were no hit last year. They're trying to come back this year and win it. It's a healthy fastball over the outside part of the play with good run to it at 92. Al Randall, big A's fan, grew up not too far from there. He said, I'm going to stick with him. And a lot of fun memories watching A's players play, he said. A late swing, one and two, the count. He'd been out, glove, arm side, arm side, arm side, and to come across, get to the glove side exactly where Drake wasn't looking for that pitch. A very uncomfortable swing. That one dives low. Oh, they're ready to celebrate on the first base side. That West team, look at them. Do it for the gram, baby. Got to get the, got to get the content. <laughs> Two and two, the count to Drake. High pop up. Could be a play. Could be the end. Great effort. Three members of the West team come together. None of them able to come up with it. Winoker had the longest way to go out there in left field, but both infielders came to join him as well. I'm enjoying this re this release from Cal Randall and how the ball, you know, coming from his big, tall frame and. He releases it kind of low, it kind of planes out. It's got that ride. We've got the Yeti already uh, locked and loaded right here. Let's see if Isaiah Drake can have anything to say about that. Yeah, Drake spoils a good fastball in at 91. Our content team's down there, as you said, too. Taylor Gillum a moment ago took that foul ball. He's ready. Tanner Schofield's with him. Gathering that content. There the guys are. Isaiah said, okay. 
Now Rand Randall's breaking ball as much as we've seen from the other low slot righties is a big sweeper that I don't think he's gonna I think he's gonna just stick with the fastball because he's got confidence in it. He's throwing it to where he wants it. This is just a little bit low. It's a challenge for him with regard to school at De La Salle has a long drive every day. He's up at 545 in the morning leaving home gets home about 730 at night. Said it's for me. I do it for the academics and the athletics. Growing up fast, Cal Randall may be able to lock this game down. Not yet, though. I like it, Isaiah Drake. No one wants to be that last out. Drake's nope. fighting. There's another way to look at it. He's representing the tying run. A couple of runners out there. I think it would feel more. Exciting for Drake then to get the red team sitting down and watching. 3 2. Broke his bat. That'll do it. The West Squad victorious in the 2022 perfect game. All American classic. Another fun night in a big league yard this year at Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona. Gentlemen, the future of the game is in very bright hands. Think they care about winning this ball game, David? <laughs> oh, yes, they care. They care. That was like that was like uh, winning the national championship, and they did. They won the PG National All-American Classic. What a game! Well, I know. I think I'm definitely going to stop predicting high-scoring <laughs> games because if we're going to have the if we're going to have the defense, we're going to have the pitching. What else are we have? We have a new tradition we're, starting here. We're, we're having when you win the when you win the championship, you go in the pool, just bully, <laughs> pull uni, no regard. For health, spikes. It's a party, baby. Check your back pockets, no phones. <laughs> uh, the East Coast team, uh, not, not uh, missing out a little bit. They could join them. I'm looking at the smart guys like Rehovac and, and Sakura that are just sitting on the yeah. fence right I'm now. I'm not sure I'm jumping into a pool with, with metal spikes on, but. Good call by you. Hey, I've had it. Good call You're in high school, you. you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, dang, okay. Both these teams played so well. It was so much fun to see. You could tell they had made their decision to go visit that pool in right field, which is such a unique part of this Major League Stadium. The East team says, come on back in your wet baseball uniforms. Let's shake hands together. But fun. It was fun to, to see the rules change late. I mean, remember, as much as it's a 5-2 game, this was a 1-1 game. I think what I celebrate as much as anything, Hunter, as these wet ball players come back in, level of defense we saw in a lot of these plays. I mean, we really saw some solid defense. You, you know, Darren, we did, we saw some, some solid defense, a lot of base running, a lot of stealing bases, a lot of great pitching. And, you know, to have a low-scoring ball game means you're playing good, clean baseball for the most part. Besides the, the you know, the first run from the East, uh, a little bit of throwing some of the ball away. But besides that, it was, like, really good defensive plays. The infield, uh, the one ball that Dylan ran, ran down in the first inning in center field where, where Max, yeah, we're getting ready to get that way. But just, you're right, great defense, good pitching, and a good ball game. All right, let's get it on downstairs. Danny Wexelman is with all of them. Danny, help us give out that MVP award down there. Jump on in there. Yeah, I am so excited. We have Reggie Sanders, the manager of the West squad, who predicted the win. Luis Gonzalez, our honorary chairman here, as well as a fan favorite in town. And Alec Thomas, who stayed for us after beating the White Sox center fielder for the D-backs here to present the MVP trophy to Ryder Helfrich. Hand it on over. Congratulations, Ryder. The crowd, how about that? All right, my friend, I'm gonna chat with you. You just ran to jump in the pool. You got the MVP, how are you feeling? Oh man, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, just standing here. Another ice bath, well-deserved for Ryder, Ryder Helfrich. You break up the no-no in this seven. What pitch did you see? What was your approach? Because you didn't want the West team to be no-hit two years in a row. Nah, coming into that bat, I knew it was a new pitcher, and I mean, he threw the first pitch fastball as a ball, and I was just sitting on fastball all the way, so I got in, didn't miss it, so yeah. 
No, you didn't. And then in extras, you drive in two runs. Hunter Pence said the offense runs through you. What does that mean to you? I mean, it's a great honor coming from somebody like that. So, I mean, nothing better than that. So, yeah, definitely a great moment right now. So. The MVP of the Classic, mobbed by your teammates. You get another ice bath. Can you describe this moment? <laughs> I don't think I can. There's nothing much better than this. So, I mean, it's been great. So, yeah, thank you for everybody putting this on. So. Ryder, congratulations. Thank you very much. Darren, back to you. Good stuff. You're cold and you're wet. Take a lot of vitamin C tonight, Ryder Helfrick. Go get some dry clothes on. This was a wonderful celebration of baseball here in Chase Field at Phoenix, Arizona. For Hunter Pence, David Ronsley, Danny Wexelman, and our entire crew, led by producer Mark Rita and director Marty Tarr. And of course, our tech leader, Steve Banta. Thank you for joining us. This has been a presentation of ESPN, your worldwide leader in sports. Thanks for joining us for the perfect game, All-American Classic. The perfect game cares foundation and the company that makes everything run so smoothly. Blue Ridge Sports and Entertainment. In just a few moments.